Yes. Is it clear, my voice? Is it clear? Yeah, one over. Good evening, bro. So, get your textbook. Huh? Get ready. Yes, get your textbook. Book here, Navin. Yeah. Patra, DP. Yes. So, first chapter onwards, I am going to give you a revision. Get your textbook and uh, Take pencil as well. still any idea if I get immediately I'm going to explain there. So first uh, nutrition chapter onwards, I'm going to start from the beginning. So here, what are autotrophs and heterotrophs? Definition with the example. This is a two marks question. So what are autotrophs and uh, heterotrophs? Autotrophs means which can prepare their own food by using water, uh, chlorophyll, sunlight and carbon dioxide. Sunlight and uh, carbon dioxide. So you can write uh, uh, some of the organisms, they can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Uh, to occur photosynthesis, this uh, water, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, sunlight are essential. So this process is called photosynthesis. These organisms are called uh, autotrophs. Example, all green plants you can write. Heterotrophs means uh, who cannot prepare their own food. They depend on another organisms known as uh, heterotrophs. So human beings and all animals are known as uh, heterotrophs. Is it clear? Clear my voice? Clear my voice? These are two questions. Uh, Two marks questions. This year we don't have one mark question, no. So this we can consider as a two marks questions in the other. Yeah, okay. So that marks questions we have to with the definition and example we have to write water drops and what are heterotrophs. Next year. So who gave first photosynthesis equation in which year? Who gave first photosynthesis equation in which year? So C. B. Van Nail, who gave photosynthesis equation in the first time, 1931. Good evening, sir. B. Shiva B. Okay, okay. Good evening, Shiva. Sravanam. Srinivas sir. Sravanam. Sri Priyana. Okay. <laughs> Right. So here, C. B. Van Nail who gave first time photosynthesis equation. So that is carbon dioxide plus water gives rest, carbohydrate, water and oxygen. CH2O, carbohydrate, then water and oxygen, water and oxygen. 
So this is the first equation which is given by C. B. Van Nail in 1931. So it may give as a two marks question. At the first time, who gave Fordson's equation? C. B. Van Nail in 1931. One molecule of carbon dioxide add with one molecule of water. And it gives carbohydrates CH, CH2O plus H2O plus O2. Carbohydrate, water, and oxygen. These are the products we will get. That is the first equation of photosynthesis. Next, we are going to discuss about write about photosynthesis equation. I write the photosynthesis equation. Okay. So general generally you get the question. Already I gave you clear information. So when you read about photosynthesis equation, you have to understand the question clearly. What is that? Whether it is a first photosynthesis equation or it is general photosynthesis equation. So there they will mention who gave at the first time photosynthesis equation. Means that is CB van nail, CH2O plus H2O plus O2 you have to write. Otherwise, C6 H2O6 plus H2O plus 6O2. 6 H2O, 6 O2. This is a photosynthesis equation. So first R photosynthesis equation. First means CB van nail equation. Photosynthesis equation means you have to write C6 H2O6 plus 6 H2O plus 6 O2. You have to write. So this is the difference between the first equation and the general photosynthesis equation. Next students. Uh, listen carefully. So many times I said uh, there is no time to discuss again and again. This is, I think, so lost revision for you. So here there is a four marks question. Four marks question. How do you prove that carbohydrates present in the leaf? How do you prove that carbohydrates present in the leaf? So I said very clearly. Take, take two leaves, okay, boil it in methylated spirit, then you apply iodine solution on the leaves. So that turns into blue-black color. If that leaf turns into blue-black color, then there is a carbohydrates. So to say it is only the three things, but when you are going to write, you have to follow the procedure. Okay. What is that procedure? Aim finding carbohydrates in the leaves. Finding carbohydrates in the leaves or leaf. Next, materials required beaker, test tube, water, spirit lamp, iodine solution methylated spirit petri dish okay so if you want a flucker some other things you can use to do this so what is the procedure here you are going to boil that leaf in the methylated spirit i said to you very clearly again and again i am recalling you you have to take first beaker that beaker filled with water then you have to take one test tube in the test tube, you have to take methylated spirit. In that spirit, you have to keep the leaf. Then this test tube, you have to keep in the beaker water. Then you want to boil it. So this is a procedure you have to follow. So after that, without, without using beaker water, if you boil, what will happen? I said very clearly. That leaf will burn. That activity you cannot continue. It may harm also to you. That's what uh, that procedure should not change. As it is, you have to write. Then in the conclusion, you are going to write. I took that leaf from the methylated spirit after boiling. Then I washed that leaf with the water. Then I apply iodine solution on that. Then that leaf turns into blue black color that indicates us there is a carbohydrate that indicates us there is a carbohydrate so here 
precautions while you are boiling while you are keeping on the stove and holding the glass beaker test tube all you can handle with the care but sometimes already i said that why do we boil methylated spirit uh, leaf in the methylated spirit this is two marks question again in this activity why do you boil why do you boil leaf in methylated spirit so what is the reason you can get ready to give the answers as a students why do you boil the leaf in the methylated spirit to remove chlorophyll to remove chlorophyll if you remove chlorophyll in that leaf there will be only starch that we can identify easily with the iodine solution so don't forget so this is a process completely starch identification by using a iodine solution so before going to apply iodine solution we have to boil this in methylated spirit that the way how you are going to use that you know very well okay yes venkateshwar rao maila good evening sir so this is i think satvika am i right okay k karthik kotte karthik okay right so here right here one more questions are there one more questions what are one more questions in this content water photosynthesis air photosynthesis then uh one more is there no water pho photosynthesis air photosynthesis and light photosynthesis yeah light and photosynthesis right so water photosynthesis that we learnt in the van helmet experiment not only water but also other materials when we water to the leaf sir when we water to the plant to that plant root system whatever the soil is there in in that uh, in that soil some of the materials are there that material means here minerals that minerals dissolve in the water that water entered into the plant through the root system by asmo regulation their asmo regulation is the ninth class plasma membrane chapters so here not only but also the word i said that so nutrients entered into the so the water and photosynthesis so why here water and photosynthesis we are going to discuss means water combined with carbon dioxide in the photosynthesis process at the chlorophyll so that's what the water without water there is no life plant for the plant and there is no photosynthesis process also if less amount of water is there so frequently it it continuously it absorbs water from the soil along with the nutrients air and photosynthesis so when we discussed about air and photosynthesis joseph priestley experiment so carbon dioxide absorbs for the photosynthesis we know up to now so before that priestley's experiment plants also require oxygen plants also require oxygen and plants releases oxygen so this two practically proved that so when photosynthesis process occur by the bell jar experiment so candle mint plant rat whatever the experiment is there so that plant mint plant releases air into the atmosphere so that air helps things to burn and that air helps to continue the life of the rat practically proved that joseph priestley said that that is the life gas who discovered at the first time oxygen that is a joseph priestley at that time he called as a life gas so 1774 and 75 lavoisier gave the oxygen uh, name to the life gas that is a process so here uh, oxygen release and carbon dioxide absorption so this activity uh, tells us how oxygen releases by the plants and how carbon dioxide absorbs and how the carbon dioxide releases and oxygen absorbs that uh, respiration and photosynthesis process vice versa so that activity the air role we can understand in this content next we know that uh, the first activity from this chapter how do you prove that uh, light is essential 
three days dark room coated plant to remove the chlorophyll. Is it correct to remove the chlorophyll? Why do we keep the potted plant in the dark room? What is the reason? Why do we keep the potted plant in the dark room? What is that? So we keep potted plant in the dark room to remove the already prepared starch. To remove already prepared starch. Yes. So we, we keep uh, three to four days later we we will uh, identify that uh, plant uh, condition whether the leaves get wrinkles or not then we arrange a light screen on the, any one of the leaf of the plant then we will keep in the sunlight five to six hours then we can uh, cut one leaf along with uh, the light screen which we apply on that leaf means uh, you can do single leaf or you can do with the two leaves by comparing so already that also i said very clearly so both you are going to again boil in the methylated spirit so this uh, keeping in the dark room and boiling in the methylated spirit quite opposite questions don't confuse and don't forget if you keep it in the dark room starch vacates if you boil in the methylated spirit the chlorophyll removes so to remove the starch to remove the chlorophyll two different activities then I wouldn't just ask this, but you know very well. So here, at the end, at the end, you have to write. So by using this light screen, I absorb that. By using light screen, I absorb that. Where light absent due to this light screen, their starch didn't form. So that's what it concludes that. In the absence of light, starch will not form. In the absence of light, starch will not form. So that you have to write in your conclusion. Because why did we use light screen? To obstruct the light fall on the leaf. Okay. Don't forget that. That is the conclusion. So in the conclusion, you have to write the clear information. Here, I... I arranged a light screen on this leaf. Upon this leaf, certain area light absent due to this light screen. So there I didn't find the starch. So if there also light is there, there also starch formation occur. Due to absence of light, there is no formation of starch. So that's what light is essential for photosynthesis. So that is a conclusion should not forget. Picture should draw clearly. This may be given as four or six marks question. Yeah. So light screen experiment completed just now. Asmi, Asmita, no? Yeah, very good evening. Very good evening. Now, next question. How do you prove that oxygen evolution occur during the photosynthesis? How do you prove that oxygen occur during the photosynthesis? So the same thing here, take test tube, bigger, water, matchstick. Recently I said very clearly, matchstick, match box along with the matchsticks. Only matchstick without burning it is not use, useful. So you can, you can arrange, so funnel inside the test tube and pour water in the test tube. Keep a hydrilla plant in that invert it uh, and uh, you can keep in the beaker so filled with the uh, water so here in the test tube no gap is there test tube completely filled with water uh funnel inside and hydrilla plant inside and you invert it you can you up down and down up you can invert that and keep in the beaker water so that you know that very well so aim oxygen evolution during the photosynthesis Materials require funnel, beaker, test tube, matchstick. Okay. Then you are going to keep in the sunlight 5 to 6 hours. Afterwards, you will find air bubbles in the test tube. Only you will find air bubbles. You should not give directly that is oxygen. You should not give directly that is oxygen. That you can write air bubbles. That's it. 
so there is air bubbles that air bubbles whether it that air is whether it is oxygen or carbon dioxide or whatever if you want to know that you are going to use a match stick keep in the mouth of the test tube the flame increases so that's what you can conclude that that is oxygen that is oxygen without uh, testing with the burning splinter or match stick you cannot conclude that that is oxygen air released by the plant that's it what type of air that or what is the exact air that you can know by using a match stick only you can conclude that so that's it next here what questions may come from this activity as a one mark or two marks so here no one mark is there but only two marks so why did you use only hydrilla plant itself with, for this experiment that is two marks question if they give two marks question this question may ask why hydrilla plant itself we use it to know oxygen evolution during the photosynthesis activity e photosynthesis activity lo oxygen release avutundani cheppadaniki hydrilla plant ni enduku upayogistamu why do we use that so hydrilla plant can be alive without root system in the water so it is convenient to do our activity it is very useful to do our activity so that's what we will use hydrilla plant cell but is the reason okay light screen completed oxygen evolution completed then structure of chloroplast picture you can learn students structure of chloroplast because communication through modal drawing so i think in the first uh, pre final i saw that picture okay communication through modal drawing that picture uh, you can learn sometimes that picture will give without labels you have to write the labels this is a two marks picture communication through modal drawing academic standard in that big standard maybe you will get a transfer section of leaf okay right now almost next we are going to discuss about the photosynthesis process explain the process of photosynthesis so in the other two questions already i said very 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 important questions i explained here and you remember that in this you should write along with the structure of chloroplast describe the structure of chloroplast it may give as a four marks question picture you have to draw and explain the structure otherwise you have to draw the picture as a communication communication through modal drawing so they will give the chloroplast picture you have to label that parts so three layers are there outer two layers and innermost layer is granum so stalks are connected each other so thylakoids granum thylakoid so upon the granum thylakoid chlorophyll a and b and the remaining portion colorless fluid that is called stoma so granum thylakoid stoma two parts are there in the chloroplast so in this structure itself in this structure is itself so photosynthesis process occur good evening ra good evening sujay so where light reaction takes place and where dark reaction takes place this two marks questions you may get actually it is one mark question according to this curriculum we don't have we don't have one mark questions anish is good evening welcome so this is a revision for the students for 10th class the tuesday onwards they, they are going to write exams sorry monday onwards next monday onwards so the last revision for them okay thank you so here two questions i am going to ask where does light reaction take place and where does dark reaction takes place so here yeah here light reaction takes place on granum thylakoid dark reaction takes place in stoma so light reaction and the dark reaction two phases are there in the photosynthesis that you know very well light reaction photons absorbed by chlorophyll a and b which are located on the granum thylakoid it forms atp and nadph so absorption of photons 
splitting of water molecules and the formation of ATP and NADPH. These three steps are there in uh, light reaction. Three steps are there. So first one, photons absorbed by chlorophyll A and B, which are located on granum thylakine. Second one, by using that photons, with the help of the light, water molecules are going to split. So that photolysis, so that we call as, that we call as Hill's reaction. What is photolysis or what is Hill's reaction? So this is one more question. Maybe it given as two marks. What is photolysis? So splitting of water molecules is known as photolysis. So this we call as what is Hill's reaction also. So Robert Hill uh, explained about this uh, photolysis. So that's what it is also known as a Hill's reaction. Okay. At the end of light reaction, ADP, NADPH. So which are known as uh, assimilatory powers or end products of uh, light reaction. So that also one more question, but no one more questions are there according to this question paper. So if you get uh, this as a two marks question, you can write a definition. At the end, uh, some products will form. So those are called assimilatory powers. Those are ADP and NADPH, right? So after that, uh, without light also, the photosynthesis uh, process continues. So that's what that is called a uh, dark reaction or biosynthetic phase. So in that uh, intermediate products will form, those are GPA, 3GPA, 3 glycerol phosphoric acid, then 1,5-ribulose by phosphate, RUBP. Then finally, it forms glucose, water, and oxygen. These are the end products of light reaction. So this process occur in the stomata. This is called enzymatic reaction. So first process, that is a light reaction, which occur on granum thylakide. And the second process, which occur in the stroma, colorless fluid, this is enzymatic reaction. So end products of light reaction, ATP and NADPH here, end products of dark reaction, so glucose, water, and oxygen. So this is completely uh, photosynthesis process. This process completely occur in stomata. Where it occur? Stomata. Where it occur? Chloroplast. Where it occur? Chloroplast. So this is about completely photosynthesis process, light reaction, dark reaction. If there is any doubt, you can ask me immediately. I will go with another content. Next, autotrophs, heterotrophs. Uh, autotrophs completed. Heterotrophs means which depend on another organisms. Okay, heterotrophic nutrition. So, parasitic nutrition also we discussed. Is there any doubt? Ribulose, RU means ribulose by phosphate. Ribulose by phosphate. 1, 5, RU, B, P. You can write as is in that. If you want to write a complete sentence, ribulose by phosphate. 1, 5, 1, 5. Okay, 1, 5. RUBP, 1,5 ribulose biphosphate formation occur. Then finally, it convert into glucose, water, and oxygen. Oxygen release into the atmosphere. Water also send out as a water vapor, or it will store in the chloroplast. Then starch also will store in the leaves itself in the chloroplast. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
MBTV, thank you for coming. This is my students' uh, revision session. So don't mind. So if any new ones are uh, there, I gave you moderator. You go with, you can connect with them. So these are all my students. Yeah, thank you. So this is a, a revision schedule for the students. If any um, promoters are there, I will I will inform to them. Then you can exchange each other. Okay. Right. Parasitic nutrition. Convalvesi family. Dodder plant. So dodder plant has a special structure. That structure is a root. So that root we call as astoria. So this parasitic nutrition means, so one of the organism entered into another organism's body, from that they feed. So here, by the root, it penetrates into the host plant up to ploium. From the ploium, it receives the food materials. So the special structure, that root known as astoria, this type of nutrition is called Parasitic nutrition. Cascuta or daughter plant family is convalvesi. So remember, students, it may give as a choose the correct answers. Daughter plant belongs to which family? Convalvesi. Daughter plant belongs to which family? Convalvesi. So this, this maybe you can get as a choose the correct answer. Convalvesi family. Dodar R. Kaskuta. Dodar R. Kaskuta. What is the special root in that Kaskuta? Astoria. What is the special root? Astoria. Okay. Now up to here, autotropic nutrition, heterotropic nutrition completed. Light reaction completed. Dark reaction completed. Okay. Means fluorescence process completed. Structure of chloroplast completed. Then light is essential completed, oxygen evolution completed. What left there? Still carbon dioxide essential for photosynthesis. What is that? Carbon dioxide essential for photosynthesis. In this, this activity also you know very well about uh, take a potted plant, uh, keep it in the dark room three days to remove the starch. Then insert one of the leaf in the wide mouth uh, bottle by using a rubber corks, split a rubber cork. Before inserting that leaf, we have to take KOH, potassium hydroxide. KOH, potassium hydroxide. Choose potted plant, keep in the dark room. Then you can insert one of the leaf in the wide mouth glass jar by using rubber cork. Before inserting the leaf, use KOH to remove the chlorophyll in the glass, in that glass jar. Then you can keep that apertures in the sunlight five to six hours. Then the process completed. Now that leaf and another leaf, you can cut it and you can boil it in methylated spirit. Then remove that leaf from the methylated spirit. Wash with the fresh water. Then you can add iodine solution on that two leaves. So the leaf which we insert in the glass jar, so half of the portion will not turn into blue-black color. The rest of the portion which is outside of the glass jar, that turns into blue-black color. The another leaf completely turns into blue-black color. Why inner portion didn't form starch? So what the raw materials required for the photosynthesis water, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, sunlight. So the glass jar must be transfer precautions. So that glass jar, when you insert that leaf, should not touch the KOH. So why did we take the KOH to remove the chlorophyll inner surface of the glass container? So without the carbon dioxide in the glass jar, we made this activity. So lack of carbon dioxide inner portion of the leaf didn't form starch. So that is the conclusion should not forget 
half of the leaf which is inside the glass jar that will not turns into blue black color why there was no carbon dioxide so if there is no carbon dioxide there is no photosynthesis process there is no formation of starch clear okay still 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 any doubt still any doubt is there any doubt ask me immediately ask 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 me immediately Yeah, okay. No, sir. Naila. Karthik, no? Who is that? Ra? Kote, no? Kote Karthik. Yeah. Now, so it, it is going on somewhat to speed. So you, you catch my important points, which are essential again and again. I am going to stress and so here human digestive system we are going to discuss. So explain about human digestive system. Total question may not come. explain about the human digestive system total question may not come if it comes the main main points you have to write in the clear way ingestion mastication bolus movement okay peristalsis bolus move by the peristalsis movement so cardiac splinter then um, propulsion retropulsion okay grinding retropulsion Chyme entered into duodenum. Okay, bile act on uh, fats, uh, pancreatic juice, uh, lipase, trypsin, amylase. Okay, peptones, uh, peptidases. Uh, okay, glycerol. Uh, um, then glucose formation occurs. Then it goes to jejunum. In the jejunum, intestinal juice, sucrose, and fructose acts on. Finally, glucose formation occurs. Microvilli absorbs and send it into the blood. Uh, undigested moves to uh, colon means ileum colon rectum and as defecation this in the uh, the main main points without forgetting so what is ingestion keeping food in our mouth what is mastication grinding the food okay saliva acts on carbohydrates and it changes dextrin sugars and simple sugars small doses then bolus formation occur it reaches into the esophagus okay so that bolus moves towards the stomach by the peristalsis movement in esophagus food pipe so then uh, it entered into the stomach through the pyloric or cardiac what is a splinter there upside means cardiac because cardiac how to remember it is near to the heart top side so cardiac splinter open bolus entered into the stomach gastric juice releases hydrochloric acid releases hydrochloric acid kills the microbes which are present in the in that food and the gastric juice contain pepsin it acts on uh, proteins and protein digestion occur in the stomach then chyme formation occur it moves into the duodenum by pyloric splinter so when chyme enter into the duodenum from the liver bile releases without enzymes bile so that acts on fats it changes fatty acids and glycerols so that process we called as emulsification okay so here what is ingestion one mark question or two marks question what is mastication one mark question or two marks how the peristalsis movement occur in the esophagus so bolus movements you have to show with the picture so sometimes picture will give and uh, what does it indicate the picture you want to identify and write uh, esophagus and the uh, bolus peristalsis movement three words you have to write that may give as two marks question then uh, in the stomach in the st stomach picture chyme and uh, bolus entered into the stomach hydrochloric acid and uh, uh, gastric juice pepsin acts on that okay so then chyme entered into the duodenum 
liver releases bile so bile acts on fats fatty acids and glycerols so here what is emulsification what is the result of emulsification this is also two marks question what is emulsification where does it occur so addition of fats in the duodenum is called emulsification so with the help of bile fats change as a fatty acids liver releases bile into the duodenum so it acts on fats fats change as fatty acids that whole process is called emulsification so the result of the emulsification fatty acid and glycerols formation occur so that is the second addition occur in which part sir so first in mouth second in stomach third in duodenum third in duodenum first carbohydrates digestion second proteins digestion okay third fats digestion in duodenum in the stomach protein and second time again digestion occur the second digestion completely this three occur in the duodenum itself which is due to pancreatic juice pancreatic juice contain lipase trypsin and amylase okay fatty acids and glycerols bile fatty acids and glycerols formation occur bile act on fats and it changes fatty acids and glycerols so mouth lo carbohydrates digestion stomach proteins digestion duodenum lo first time fats digestion then pancreatic juice when release into the duodenum again second time this three digestion occur uh, due to trypsin lipase and amylase which are uh, produced by the pancreatic juice okay then it moves toward to the jejunum okay in the jejunum again intestinal juice releases sucrose and fructose acts on that and finally peptides uh, peptones uh, fatty acids glycerols so these are all going to convert into glucose the glucose absorbs by microvilli which is located in the inner surface of the small intestine so undigested moves uh, through the ileum reaches into colon it reaches to rectum and as defecation occur okay so two times completely fats carbohydrates and uh, proteins digestion uh, twice digestion occur first carbohydrates in mouth proteins in stomach okay fats in the duodenum with the help of bile the second again in the small intestine that is first part of the duodenum due to the secretion of pancreatic juice lipase trypsin and amylase so third complete digestion occur in small intestine sucrose and given a what is that peptides and sucrose peptides and sucrose so this is due to intestinal juice secretion small intestine release peptides and sucrose which acts on peptides and sucrose which is formed by the second time digestion clear so the table is there you now that table you can read again and again don't forget this is enough over what we discussed later in the order without forgetting you can write that okay so right now digestion completed next digestion flow chart you may get it as a six marks don't forget students one information skill one activity and another one i said to you third model question describe the structure of okay describe the structure of in that in that sometimes instead of describe the structure of you may get a flow chart explain the flow chart of human digestive system ingestion mastication peristalsis movement bolus so that flow chart right from ingestion to defecation so top to bottom make a boxes and what is ingestion what is mastication what is peristalsis movement what is pyloric splinter and what is what happens in the stomach what is chyme what is the function of duodenum what is the function of liver like that you have to draw a flow chart clear
okay so this is about completely okay next uh, diseases malnutritional diseases what are malnutritional diseases lack of more than one nutrients in our diet if we take uh, such a diet uh, we will get a new, uh, malnutritional diseases so lack of uh, more than one nutrient in our diet that is called uh, malnutritional diseases so then we will get a uh, diseases those diseases are called malnutritional diseases so here two marks question is there about a malnutritional disease why do we get a malnutritional diseases so first socio economical factors second mother may get a pregnancy immediately so she is unable to feed to the baby so that's what the malnutrition occur in infants those who are below 5 years those who are below 5 years in them only we can see malnutritional diseases so third point you can write uh, lack of awareness on nutrition first socio economical factor second one is uh, mother may get a second pregnancy immediately and third one is a lack of awareness lack of uh, awareness so everybody should get the uh, proper nutrients in their food uh, so then only they become fit and healthy then they won't get a uh, malnutritional diseases so here my dear students you remember sometimes uh, so how do you prevent uh, malnutritional diseases in the infants uh, to prevent it uh, what precautions are what slogans are what suggestions will you give to society what precautions are what slogans are what suggestions will you give to society to avoid to avoid malnutritional diseases this is a different question never never you get this question i think up to now remember what suggestions will you give to the society to avoid malnutritional diseases make a question here and you can uh, you can write your own slogans or your own suggestions to avoid malnutritional diseases first in the society what are nutrients and how these nutrients are helpful to the uh, people and especially infants it means those who are uh, below 5 years child child so those who are uh, very early engage very uh, means beginning stage of that so one to five years for them the feeding proper feeding is important so for them what type of food the mother has to feed and uh, the parents should know about the diet so these kind of suggestions we have to uh, give to the people in that in the society if we spread data all will learn and they can they can prevent the occurrence of or occurring of malnutrition diseases in upcoming generation in upcoming generations now now the last question in this chapter write about vitamins write about vitamins or vitamins we can call it so there are two types of vitamins are there fat soluble and water soluble okay water soluble b and c complex fat soluble a d e k okay water soluble already i said that b1 b2 b3 b6 b12 b9 b5 b7 c b1 periberi b2 glossitis okay b3 okay b1 thiamine periberi b2 riboflavin glossitis b3 niacin or nicotinic acid pellagra b6 pyridoxin anemia b12 cyanocobalamin pernicious anemia okay b9 folic acid anemia b7 pantothenic sorry b5 pantothenic acid okay burning feet b7 biotin okay nerve disorder ascorbic acid ascorbic acid scurvy vitamin c scurvy 
സി സ്കാ സി സ്കാ വിറ്റമിൻ സി ആസ്കോർബിക് ആസിഡ് സ്കർവി ആസ്കോർ സ്കർവി റിമെമ്പർ ആസ്കോർബിക് ആസിഡ് സ്കർവി ഓക്കെ റൈറ്റ് സോ മീറ്റ് മിൽക്ക് എഗ് ലീഫി വെജിറ്റബിൾസ് ഫ്രഷ് ആൾ ഫ്രൂട്ട്സ് യു കൻ ഈറ്റ് ടു ഗെറ്റ് ഓൾ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് വൈറ്റമിൻസ് സോ യു കൻ പ്രിവെന്റ് different types of diseases sir. that is about uh, water soluble then fat soluble a retinol d calciferol e tocopherol k pilloquinin retinol retinol so from the papaya carrot beetroot leafy vegetables you will get vitamin a so lack of vitamin a night blindness blindness giraphthalmia scaly eyes these are the diseases you may get the second one is a uh, d vitamin lack of d vitamin we will get rickets we will get a uh, rickets so sunlight is a source okay next year some other also given there what is that what are the sources okay delaying dentition okay weak bones so knock on knee so bones are not strong uh, teeth formation uh, very late so here uh, liver egg butter cod liver oil shark liver oil so these are the sources for vitamin d cod liver shark liver oil so fishes from the fishes we will get uh, oils that oils give the vitamin d remember that this one only we have to remember cod liver oil shark liver oil fishes okay liver butter egg egg leafy vegetables already in all we are going to write tocopherol fruits vegetables sprouts um, sprouts meat egg sunflower oil okay fertility disorders we can prevent it next philoquinone so clotting of blood lack of vitamin k yesterday we discussed about that so first chapter completed next we are going to discuss about the respiration okay energy releasing system respire latin word breathe in so there are uh, two types of um, you know, five steps in respiration so what are the five steps write about five steps in respiration r steps in respiration so breathing gas exchange takes place in at alveoli transportation gas exchange takes place at uh, tissue level and uh, cellular respiration inhalation exhalation breathing okay that reaches to the lungs and at the lungs uh, carbon dioxide enters into alveoli oxygen entered into the blood so there gas exchange takes place then it moves to all the body parts transportation at tissue level oxygen release into the uh, tissues carbon dioxide collected and uh, carbon dioxide send into the heart heart to lungs that is double circuit circulation will enter here oxygenated uh, uh, blood entered into the cells oxygen release into the cells that oxygen combined with the glucose energy releases that is called as oxidation and cellular respiration inside the cell so their energy releases atp the end of the uh, cellular respiration formation occur adenosine triphosphate that is energy releasing system okay five steps you know that very well so carbon dioxide exhalation oxygen inhalation so air we breathe and air we breathe out but percentage of carbon dioxide inhalation time more so exhalation time uh carbon dioxide percentage increases oxygen percentage decreases so the percentage you know very well it then pathway of air pathway of air how the air moves how the air so this all steps you know very well nostrils nasal cavity okay pharynx larynx bronchi bronchioles alveoli blood so from the atmosphere in this way the air passes out the blood from the blood it will come out from the blood it will come out thank you thank you life with a parang so this is Thank you for coming this is my students live i am giving revision to the uh, 10th standard students so thank you for coming so there one more one more our uh, friend is there in the beginning
BTTV. What is that name? MBTV. You can connect to MBTV. Remaining all my students, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So here, this is the way the air passes to the blood, and from the blood, deoxygenated send into means carbon dioxide send outside the same way. So here, nostrils, what opening of the nose. Nasal cavity means the channeling the air for. So here, mucous membrane is there, humidifies the air, and it makes equal temperature uh, to our body temperature. Then it reaches to the uh, pharynx. It is a common passage for uh, wind and food. Then larynx, uh, that is a white box. So then trachea, then bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli, blood. So this is the process, the air process, and as a vice versa, it comes. So inhalation time or oxygen percentage more, carbon dioxide percentage less. Exhalation time, oxygen percentage somewhat decreases, carbon dioxide percentage somewhat increases. 4 to 16. So that process you know very well about it. You can write that. Okay. Here two marks question is there, students. What is the role of epiglottis? What is the role of epiglottis? So it is a flap like structure. It prevent the, the food entering into the windpipe. Okay. So we should not laugh while eating because the food particles enter into the windpipe, then violent cough occur. That we know very well about it. What is the role of epiglottis? What is the role of epiglottis? This is Stomach's question. What is the role of epiglottis? So it prevents the food particles entered into the windpipe. Okay, if the food particles enter into the windpipe, we will get the violent cough. It may harm to our life. Okay. Uh, addition, prevent. Yeah. So clear? So this is the role of uh, epiglottis. Sometimes you will get, uh, maybe, maybe this question you may get uh, uh, as a two marks question. You can explain about that. So otherwise, uh, how do you prevent, prevent uh, um, the violent cough? How do you prevent uh, the violent cough? So means uh, you should not, not laugh. You should not laugh while eating. So you should not uh, talk while uh, eating. So these kind of functions. So you concentrate on grinding and swallowing and you can eat it. Then you can talk. So this you have to follow. Okay, clear, clear, so still, is there any doubt? Any doubt is there? Right, about the epiglottis function, about the epiglottis, sometimes that feature will give you identity and what is happening here. So communication through modal drawing may get the question. Communication through model drawing, that epiglottis picture, page number 29 of textbook once you see. So that picture, that picture may give you, so what is the process going on here? What does it indicate that picture? Maybe you will get the question. So that time you can explain about the role of ex, uh, epiglottis and how it prevents a violent cough. So that may given as two marks are directly four marks. If it is a four marks, complete the process, how we grind and we swallow and how it pushes the food into the food pipe and how it prevents the violent cough that clearly explained if if only how it prevents the violent cough means just a short form you can write according to marks you can enlarge or you can cut up how far you have to write that only what is the main the meaning of the question you have to understand hi life thank you thank you this is completely revision for the students so mbtv is there upside if mbtv is new to you you can connect I gave you moderate, I think. Yeah, I'm giving more to you. Okay, you can connect. You can connect to. Right. The next, next we are going to discuss about what is the role of diaphragm? What is the role, uh, role of diaphragm? So here two questions are there, one more question. So in male, diaphragm plays a major role in respiration. In female, ribcage plays a major role in respiration. So here, sometimes diaphragm picture will give you. So what does it indicate? 
so you can explain about that diaphragm plays a major role in males in respiration so due to contraction due to contraction inhalation occur due to uh, relaxation exhalation occur this is a process so that you have to explain inhalation and exhalation contraction inhalation relaxation exhalation contraction means chest cavity comes forward so uh, air pressure decreases in the lungs so that's what air entered into the entered into the lungs rashly so that's what inhalation occur when it uh, relax then air pressure is more on the chest exhalation occur so contraction inhalation ex relaxation exhalation so that process you have to explain that is due to diaphragm in male rib cage plays a major role in respiration in male male or female female not male okay diaphragm plays a major role in male next question here uh, alveoli structure is there what are the units of the lungs one more question this may give an answer choose the correct answer what are the units of the lungs students so give the answer what are the units of the lungs units of the lungs are alveoli alveoli so alveoli is units of lungs so here the picture of alveoli so the picture will give you what does it indicate gases exchange takes place gases exchange takes place if it is given as a two marks question you can write gases exchange at exchange takes place at alveoli it is in steps in respiration steps in respiration okay sometimes that picture will give you so you have to label the parts what are blood vessel what is alveoli what is in the blood and what is in the alveoli you have to write it in alveoli oxygen is there in the blood carbon dioxide is there okay so alveoli receives uh, carbon dioxide into the alveoli and it sends oxygen into the blood so gas exchange takes place that you know very well clearly but the picture and parts you have to explain clearly okay next uh, transportation of gases you know that oxygen and carbon dioxide carried by the hemoglobin which is present in our red blood cells oxy hemoglobin hp plus o2 gives rest hbo2 so transportation occur okay h plus o2 okay hbo2 gives rest h plus o2 that uh, uh, breaks down at the tissue level here at the alveoli so hbo2 formation occur at the tissue level hbo2 gives rest h plus o2 it divides so that process you will know very well about it after the transportation and before transportation so two marks question is there again why do mountaineers and dismas they carry oxygen cylinders along with them maybe they give as a four marks question why do carry oxygen cylinders along with them be swimmers and uh, mountaineers otherwise two marks question why do these swimmers carry oxygen cylinders along with them or why do mountaineers carry oxygen cylinders along with them so oxygen depth occur lack of oxygen they may die they must die not they may die they will die no doubt so to prevent the uh, it uh, they carry oxygen cylinders along with them if they are swimming in the deep ocean or if they are climbing at the high level of the mountain okay aerobic respiration anaerobic respiration is there write about aerobic respiration and write about anaerobic respiration so aerobic respiration in the presence of oxygen anaerobic respiration in the absence of oxygen in aerobic respiration more amount of energy formation occur heat and carbon dioxide formation occur in anaerobic also heat and carbon dioxide occur but less amount of energy formation occur okay so what is so in this anaerobic respiration okay in the bacteria lactic acid and energy formation occur okay in the yeast ethanol carbon dioxide energy formation occur so in our muscle cells anaerobic respiration occur so when you run very fast at that time so lactic acid formation occur in our cells at that time we will get a 
pains so that their anaerobic respiration occur so when your mother is going to prepare idli or dosa black grams and rice they kept in the water so the whole night your mother soak this two in the water so in that yeast formation occur they give a foul smell so that is ethanol smell so anaerobic respiration occur in yeast due to yeast ethanol formation occur ethanol ethanol plus atp plus energy so less amount of energy that may be in fermentation or that may be in anaerobic respiration along with the carbon dioxide and heat ethanol atp and heat heat energy so that is anaerobic and aerobic means general respiration what we discussed about that okay so glucose levels increases decreases due to our activity so aerobic and anaerobic respiration in that glucose levels are going to increase and decrease increase means here if proper percentage of oxygen is there if you have proper practice so then you can run long distance also to maintain you can maintain your uh, breathing you can maintain your heartbeat and you can run for with a constant uh, running way so if you participate unexpectedly so lack of practice oxygen levels decreases anaerobic respiration occur in our cells and glucose levels are going to decrease then in the absence of oxygen and glucose levels lactic acid formation occur in our cells then due to the formation of lactic acid you will get a muscle pains next what is oxygen depth and what is aerobic and what is anaerobic questions are there so these two marks questions what is aerobic respiration what is anaerobic respiration what is a, what is oxygen depth aerobic means in the presence of oxygen respiration occur anaerobic means less amount of oxygen whatever the respiration occur that respiration is called anaerobic respiration without the air without oxygen whatever the respiration occur that is oxygen depth that lack of air condition oxygen depth there is no oxygen so that condition is called oxygen depth these three questions are different next yeast experiment i said very clearly again 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 so here when you are going to write yeast experiment there are different questions are there so what is yeast experiment here during anaerobic respiration carbon dioxide and heat releases anaerobic respiration jaruginappadiki ni aerobic respiration jariginappadiki ni so anaerobic respiration yeast and yeast and bhushan rao who is that bhushan rao student name okay so you can give your name sukruta ah uh, okay bindu right right okay so aerobic and anaerobic here very clear though it is aerobic or anaerobic heat to carbon dioxide releases but aerobic more amount of oxygen anaerobic less amount of oxygen so, um, means presence of more amount of oxygen less amount of oxygen the process occur so here in the yeast anaerobic respiration occur so why do we take yeast itself means we we can do that activity because inside the yeast anaerobic respiration occur so that we can prove with this activity first we have to take glucose solution we have to boil it so here why do we take glucose solution itself there is a question is there so yeast can grow in glucose solution yeast glucose solution lo perugutadi it can grow it can develop glucose solution lo ne develop avutundi kabatti glucose solution ni teesukuntam so why did we boil the glucose solution glucose solution enduku boil chesam ana question kuda vastadi so what is the purpose to remove the oxygen in the glucose solution why high content of oxygen is there by boiling we can remove the oxygen content then there is a less amount of oxygen is there at that time we are going to find respiration in the yeast so after boiling make it cool immediately add yeast powder then we are going to use diazin green b diazin green b ni enduku upayogistam ani two marks gaani one mark question raavachu baaga gurtu pettukondi without confusion diazin green b if we apply in that the glucose solution along with the yeast around the yeast pink color formation occur 
if pink color formation occur around the yeast means that pink color indicates as there is a less amount of oxygen in the glucose solution a pink color yeast chuttu kanapadindi ante manaku pink color kanapadindi ante aa glucose solution lo oxygen takkuga undi an artham so that indicates as so then we will continue that process atharvatha manam activity ni continue chestam so then we will pour paraffin wax in keep two hold rubber cork in one hold one thermometer and in another hold delivery to the one end in this hole and another end and we will keep in the lime water then the respiration process continues in that glucose solution heat releases so due to that heat thermometer uh, mercury levels in that thermometer increases then that air passes into the lime water lime water turns into milky white so milky white uh, if the lime water turns into milky white means there is a carbon dioxide so how do we find that the temperature increases means so heat produces means the mercury levels increases in the thermometer so this it is completely anaerobic respiration in yeast heat and the carbon dioxide produces this is the conclusion of this activity next combustion and respiration differences we have to write combustion occur within the certain time itself so respiration occur continuously end of the life of the organism so in the combustion in the respiration in the in the respiration oxygen uses to burn the glucose here activity is there second activity so observing changing changes during combustion of sugar so in the test tube we have to take some sugar and we have to boil it so if we boil it that sugar will burn and it releases carbon dioxide that we are sending into the lime water lime water turns into milky white so sugar mandiste carbon dioxide heat produce avutundi the same thing happened in our body also when glucose burn in our cells with the oxygen it produces heat carbon dioxide and energy here heat energy there heat energy here carbon dioxide their carbon dioxide formation occur that energy utilized by our body cells so here the heat energy will use to run our machines or whatever it is so like this so combustion of sugar and uh, combustion of glucose in our cells there is a similar uh, function going on here that we are going to compare next evolution in exchange of gas exchange system so evolution evolution system we discussed so there are five types of respirations we discussed in animals okay diffusion gill respiration branchial respiration okay then cutaneous respiration then tracheal respiration next to pulmonary respiration five types of respiration so in amoeba diffusion process that is a diffusion in fishes by using the gills gill respiration or branchial respiration in cockroaches arthropods tube like structure helps to um respire so sugar crystals test tube la iskunte boil chestapudu heat to carbon dioxide produce avutundi sugar is going to boil and it produces heat and carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide we are sending into the lime water it turns into milky white so the test tube gets heat that is heat energy that we can use to do other activities okay next next gas exchange is five i, I said no five types of respiratory systems diffusion gill or branchial uh, tracheal in cockroaches then cutaneous frog and earthworm by using the skin then pulmonary respiration by using the lungs these are the uh, five types of respirations diffusion branchial or gill tracheal okay then cutaneous then pulmonary respiration diffusion okay second one by using the diffusion means through surroundings into cytoplasm cytoplasm into surroundings through the body surface oxygen entered and carbon dioxide sent out endosmosis ex exosmosis and amoeba in amoeba 
by using the gills gill respiration or branchial respiration by using tube like structures tracheal respiration by using skin cutaneous respiration earthworm and frog by using respiration pulmonary respiration okay bano why that further process occur means glucose formation occur in our mouth itself but it should be it should be changed as liquid form it should be diluted and it has to receive by the cells okay so ikkada carbohydrates starch formation occur semi solid yes my boy starch glucose both are same starch is in liquid uh, sorry semi solid state glucose in liquid state states are different states are different so until liquid state formation digestion process continues that is the reason okay i think you understood now so carbohydrates is in semi solid state glucose in liquid state up to up to absorption of glucose in microvilli the process continues so semi solids change as a liquid state finally glucose formation occur okay now 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 the next question respiration in plants so through the leaf through the stem through the root so upon the leaf stomata are there so through the stomata respiration occur in the plants okay transpiration photosynthesis and respiration through the stomata second on the stem lenticels are there so stem cells are receives oxygen by using the lenticels uh, in the stems also respiration occur so in mangrove trees especially knees knees are aerial roots so salt content is more in the mangrove trees because which are located very near to the marine water body so that so that roots will come out from the soil from the atmospheric air directly they receive water. so that's what those are called aerial roots those are called aerial roots next activity how do you brew that spouted seeds respire release carbon dioxide or release release heat also so two different activities you can do or two activities at a time you can do that so if they said heat spouted seeds single hold rubber cork thermometer you can see that if they said that both heat and carbon dioxide take spouted seeds thermometer and lime water hi hi varai thank you thank you for coming the revision for my students thank you thank you there uh, mbtv is there upside and uh, live with uh, farang so two new members are there you can you can connect with them okay thank you varai thank you okay next this two questions you can read carefully whether they asked about heat releases or whether they asked about uh, carbon dioxide release sometimes both sometimes single so thermometer conical flask spouted seeds thermometer delivery tube the conical flask two hole rubber cork lime water beaker so both at a time or lime water and spouted seeds uh, rubber hole, rubber cork and beaker conical flask so like that according to the question we can use 
రెండు ఉన్నాయా ఒకటే ఉన్నాయా అనేది నెక్స్ట్ ఓకే నా లెటర్స్ కౌంట్ ద రిథమిక్ విచ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ద పల్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ పల్స్ వన్ మార్క్ ఆర్ టూ మార్క్ పల్స్ రేట్ సో ట్రాన్స్పోర్టేషన్ పంపింగ్ ఆర్గాన్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ బాడీ హార్ట్ పంపింగ్ ఆర్గాన్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ బాడీ హార్ట్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ పల్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ పల్స్ ఓకే ద రిథమిక్ మూమెంట్ ఆఫ్ బ్లడ్ ఫ్లో ఇన్ అవర్ బాడీ త్రూ ద ఆర్టర్ ఈస్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ పల్స్ ఫర్ ఎ మినిట్ సెవెంటీ టూ టైమ్స్ హార్ట్ బీట్ పల్స్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు టూ హార్ట్ బీట్ దట్ వీ నో వెరీ వెల్ సో దెర్ ఇస్ ఎ టేబుల్ యు నో దట్ న్యూలీ బర్న్ హండ్రెడ్ టు వన్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఓకే సిక్స్ మంత్స్ టు త్రీ మంత్స్ టు సిక్స్ మంత్స్ నైంటీ టు వన్ ట్వంటీ ఓకే సిక్స్ మంత్స్ టు వన్ ఇయర్ ఎయిటీ టు వన్ ట్వంటీ దెన్ వన్ ఇయర్ టు టెన్ ఇయర్స్ సెవెంటీ టు వన్ థర్టీ దెన్ సీనియర్ సిటిజన్ సిక్స్టీ టు హండ్రెడ్ ఓకే వెల్ ట్రైన్డ్ అడల్ట్ అథల్ట్ ఫార్టీ టు సిక్స్టీ టైమ్స్ రెస్పిరేషన్ అండ్ ట్రాన్స్పోర్ట్ సారీ హార్ట్ బీట్ అక్కర్ ఫర్ ఎ మినిట్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ ద టేబుల్ విచ్ ఈస్ గివెన్ ఇన్ అవర్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ సో దాట్ టేబుల్ యు మే గెట్ యాస్ ఇస్ అండ్ టూ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆన్ దట్ ఎనీ టూ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆన్ దట్ బై యూజింగ్ దిస్ టేబుల్ యూ విల్ గెట్ దట్ మే కమ్ యాస్ ఎ టూ మార్క్స్ క్వశ్చన్ ఆర్ దట్ మే యాస్ ఎ ఫోర్ మార్క్స్ క్వశ్చన్ హాయ్ వార్ ఐ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫర్ కమింగ్ so this is my students live thank you thank you so upside mbtv and uh, life uh, with uh, something one id is there if they are new to you you can connect thank you for coming thank you for your support varai right. thank you so this is completely for the students so no no problem thank you for coming so this is a revision schedule for the students so i think it is clear students so who discovered a uh, stethoscope rene lennick what is the advantage of or what is the use of stethoscope to know the heart beat rene lennick 1816 rene lennick 1816 1816 1816 remember that rene lennick okay so describe the external structure of heart okay brown color psap okay uh, broad end posterior end sharp top end bottom end bottom end sharp top end uh, broad so pear shape brown color all this you can uh, 10 to 10 cm 5 to 6 or 3 cm thickness the like kidney whatever the measurements are there you can write okay that is about the uh, external structure of kidney next uh, internal structure of kidney i said very clearly four chamber heart septum interarticular septum interventricular septum auricular ventricular septum okay so left auricular ventricular septum right auricular ventricular septum bicapsid tricapsid okay left ventricle big right ventricle big uh, right auricle big so oxygenated blood carried by systemic aorta deoxygenated blood carried by main vein oxygenated blood from the lungs to heart pulmonary vein deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to lungs coronary artery sorry pulmonary artery so coronary artery carries oxygenated blood from lungs to walls of the heart coronary vein carries deoxygenated blood from walls of the heart to lungs so this six blood vessels lungs heart body parts pulmonary circuit systemic circuit double circuit circulation william hare discovery of arteries and veins so when he tied so toward to the heart toward to the heart that is vein because that is not toward to the heart that is move uh, toward to the body parts so away from the heart that is toward to the heart that is artery so arteries and veins we discussed among arteries and veins one more is there that is a blood capillary the smallest blood vessel so write the difference between the arteries and veins arteries thick veins thin arteries carries oxygenated veins carries deoxygenated uh, in veins walls are there in arteries walls are absent lumen size of the artery is small lumen size of the vein artery lumen small lumen size of the vein big okay red color blue black color valves present valves absent oxygenated deoxygenated toward to the body parts toward to the heart artery carries toward to the body parts vein carries toward to the heart so like that the thickness color function so that we can write about 
artery vein and capillary what is cardiac cycle one contraction one relaxation is called cardiac cycle arcuate contraction ventricle relaxation ventricle contraction arcuate four together relaxation is there so that three together this three steps arcuate contraction ventricle relaxation ventricle contraction arcuate relaxation relaxation is there this together uh, cardiac cycle so in this cardiac cycle double circuit circulation is there single circuit circulation is there so in higher all animals double circuit circulation pulmonary circuit is systemic circuit that you want to write varan are you there thank you thank you for coming so my dear students sir in page number 59 if you see the single circuit circulation so from heart to okay yeah thank you thank you varan so here how body parts okay means here from the gills to from the gills to heart heart to body parts body part to gills so in fishes only one way the direction blood moves only one way so heart gills gills to body parts body parts to heart heart to gills gills to body parts body part to heart so, so like this only it occur because gill respiration in fishes so oxidation change uh, means deoxidated carbon dioxide change in the gills and it change as oxidated and it moves to the body parts okay here there is a table is there about this table once i am going to say this table also communication through modal rhyme uh, like this uh, this table you can get as is and it may give us uh, it may give us two marks or four marks question blue whale weight uh, 150000 kg so weight of the heart uh, 750 kg 750 kg number of uh, beats heart beats vachesi seven untundi elephant uh, 3000 kg 12 to 21 kg heart uh, six times for a minute heart beat so man 60 to 70 weight 300 grams then 76 times for a minute then coil uh, coil tilt coil tilt so this is the smallest bird 80 grams only 1.0.15 grams so 1200 times for a minute heart beat so is bit laga raavach smallest bird so what is the heart beat number for a minute 1200 times weight what is the weight 8 grams weight of the heart 0.15 grams heart beat for a minute 1200 times maybe it is given what is limp the limp means water lymphatic system nervous system blood circulatory system parallel another system is there that is called lymphatic system so in this lymphatic system what happens means when edema occur at, what is edema two marks question so some of the uh, substances which are flowing in the blood it will come out from the blood and it will gather between the intracellular space that is called lymphatic system so that condition is called edema that edema recovers by the lymphatic system so between the cells what are the space is there intracellular space from the blood between the cells that uh, substances gathered so this condition is called edema this condition is recovered by lymphatic system lymphatic system so this is about edema double circuit to single circuit to internal structure to external structure of heart to so lymphatic system completed now one more question is there evolution of transport system evolution of transport system so yesterday itself we discussed about brownian movement and amoeba okay next sponges flagella with the help of the flagella so it moves forward transport system occur so nidaria gastrovascular cavity okay platyelminthes okay what is the platyel means this highly supplied blood uh, blood vessels to the digestive system through the digestive system blood into the blood directly it passes so okay 
नेक्स्ट प्लाटी एलमीशील सूडोशील अनिलोलोमेट पलसटल आर्गा सो आर्दोपोड़ा पलसटल आर्गा नैक्स्ट ओके सच ए टाइप आफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम विच सूट्रिय टिश्यूस डैरेक्टली ओपन टाइप आफ सो ओपन टाइप अंड क्लोज टाइप विथ इन द ब्लड वेस विथ द ब्लड वेस सो हिर् टू टाइप आफ सर्क्युशन आर् दे ओपन अंड क्लोज सो अब टू नो वट एवर ऐ सैंड दोजर आल ओके एक्सप्ट काक्रोच रिमेनिंग आल विथ इन द ब्लड वेस सर्क्युशन अक् That is closed. Remaining all with the heart, blood vessels, transportation occur. That is a closed type of circulation. Okay. What is normal blood pressure? What is BP? Blood pressure. One twenty by eighty. Systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. One twenty numerator. One twenty is systolic pressure. Eighty is a denominator. That is a diastolic pressure. So that you want to write systole and diastole. One twenty by eighty. Next, we are going to discuss about the blood clotting. Yesterday, I said that thrombogenesis acts on thrombin, which is present in the blood, and it it forms thrombin. This thrombin acts on another substance, fibrinogen, and it changes as fibrin fiber. <coughs> fiber formation occur that pull the wound edges of the wound. Blood clotting occur, so the flow of blood will stop. That is about the blood circulation. Heart structure, okay. William Harvey experiment, so internal structure of heart, external structure of heart, all these things. Next, we are going to discuss about uh, transportation in plants. So, vascular bundle it carries the uh, food materials to all the body parts. Xylem carries water from the ground to upper parts of the plant. Phloem carries food materials from the leaves to upper part and uh, Lower part, so in both directions it uh, carries the food material. So that's what the uh, two directions. Here uh, absorption, absorbing the uh, root air. So root air about the root air one activity is there. Root air absorbs minerals from the soil along with the water. So that picture is there and uh, root pressure activity also is there. So B1 and B2 you have to recognize that. Uh, so in the measuring jar. In the measuring jar, so the water levels you have to find out. Uh, then you tie the measuring jar to the stem. Then you can uh, pour water to the root system. After certain time, that water absorbs by the root and it pushes up in the measuring jar. So the level of water in the measuring jar, how far it increases? The previous one A and B is a present one. So here B minus K. Then how much the water levels increases uh, with the help of measuring jar? We can measure that. So That occurs due to the root pressure. The water levels why it rise up means that is uh, due to root pressure. Root absorbs water and and it push upside. That is called root pressure. So we can see the water levels increasing in the measuring jar. So that is so transpiration. You know that the uh, excessive water send out from the uh, leaves through the stomata by as a water vapor. That process is called transpiration. About this transpiration. Okay. Next, I am going to discuss about the uh, transportation of uh, manufactured food. Transportation of manufactured food. So, aphids attack the plants. So, aphids as a strong proboscis and that inject into the stem of the plant and it reaches up to ploya. From the ploya, it gets a food material. So, so that is aphids extracting food. Uh, Material from the plant. That picture is there. When you see that picture, you can explain. So proboscis they use to get the food from the host plant. So which give shelter for them. So then why the growth more upside and why there is no growth downside if we make a wound on the stem. So that is also a type of transportation. So that we can prove. So when the ploughing carries food materials from the leaves to the root system, if we make a wound. So then automatically, so upper portion of the wound gets swelling. Why the food will come from the leaves and that reaches up to that place and there is no chance to reach the bottom. So they stop there itself and there 
the upper side the swelling occurs more so that indicates as a transport system carries by our means a phloem carries food materials in the plants from uh, leaves to the bottom so that we can see upside only due to this activity okay next i am going to teach about the i am going to teach about the fourth chapter excretion x means out creation means shipping so shipping out is called excretion this is a latin word so from where do we get the excretion word latin word okay so that it is clearly x means out creation means shift shifting out so here here urine test and blood test we Uh, recognize that here creatinine okay what is that a creatinine urea uric acid okay these are highest in the blood and urine uh, test so these are formed by our kidney filtration from the blood so that we are going to discuss in this so this table also you will get as is in your examination if it is given as a communication through modal drawing so by using this table whatever the questions are given there so that to that questions answer here itself you can read carefully and you can answer so this is okay the table urine test and blood test table you will get otherwise proteins creatinine calcium phosphorus uric acid sodium potassium okay osmolality glucose chloride urea you can remember in in this one means from the blood these are all filtration occur so that process in the kidney we can see in the dialysis process also. next we are going to discuss about internal structure and external structure of kidney so already i said that the brown color bean shape 10 cm 5 to 6 width 3 cm thickness so this is external structure of kidney so then internal structure of kidney means if you see that the cortex and medulla calyces is there okay hilum through that hilum um, renal artery renal vein and the ureters we can see that so in the other calyces pyramids are there in the pyramids nephrons are there these are the units of kidney lungs units of kidney alveoli units of heart cardiac cells units of kidney nephrons so afferent arteriole afferent arteriole so each nephron has two parts of malvision body renal tubule in malvision body bowman's capsule and the glomerulus in renal tubule proximal convoluted tube loop of henle and the distal convoluted tube so artery entered into the bowman's capsule primary urine formation occur so it is not, nothing but red uh, blood cells then remaining as stays in the primary urine so here what is primary urine question you may get so primary urine means filtration of the bowman's capsule uh, glomerulus whatever the, they collected that is called primary urine in that the blood cells absent remaining as is like a blood so then it goes to uh, proximal convoluted to reabsorption of occur then all useful substance again goes back only uric urea uric acid creatinine will be there in that then that um, what happened here primary urine formation occur now then it goes to loop of henle so means from the proximal convoluted tube it goes to loop of henle concentration occur and it goes to distal convoluted tube secretions occur hydrogen uh, chlorine ions will be added there okay then urine completely formation occur that urine pass through the uh, collecting duct and it reaches to the ureter and it reaches to the kidney uh, sorry urinary bladder then when it fill out uh, it will send out it will send out mixation occur so nephron structure you can remember that so bowman's capsule glomerulus proximal convoluted to loop of henle and distal convoluted to so already urinary bladder urine mixation the process everything here only amrita dalai okay it is going to end the girl now you join where you are okay very good so here formation of urine uh, explain the structure of nephron or mechanism of urine two different questions are there 
only nephron structure with the parts you have to explain how the urine formation occur means afferent arteriol enter into the glomerulus uh, afferent arteriol will come out of primary urine formation primary urine goes to uh, second part of the nephron uh, proximal convoluted tubes uh, reabsorption uh, concentration uh, through the loop of henle and secretion uh, through the these tubes these are all water so this is the fourth chapter to join lately okay whatever it so this is about mechanism of urine formation otherwise explain about nephron structure two different okay it's okay it's okay the now next question next question what are the permanent solutions uh, to sort out uh, kidney problems uh, there kidney transplantation is there okay kidney transplantation is there so that is a main uh, function it's okay it's okay so okay. so here kidney transplantation is a permanent solution those who lost their kidney functions one kidney or two kidneys if the kidney transplantation is there so they can save their life so here some alternate solutions are there that is a uh, uh, temporary solution that is a dialysis that process also we discussed what is hemodialysis or what is dialysis how does how do we do that osmo regulation also the question you may get so here by using the dialyzer machine artery connected to the dialyzer and through the channels the blood passes so then urine and the blood uh, uh, separates uh, in the dialyzer machine and it collects in the two different containers the purified blood again inject into our body through the vein so this is a dialysis process this is also known as esrd end stage renal disease end stage renal disease so urine and the blood separated from the uh, dialyzer and they can inject into the body so once in a 3 days so dialysis has to do otherwise that toxic substances formation the urine change as toxic substances in our body then the person will die so this is the process next who uh, charles of nagel first time kidney transplantation okay in 1954 and december 1st uh, 1971 in in uh, chennai christian medical college velluru so kidney transplantation done in our country okay this is the saturations and bio data of kidney transplantation okay so what are other accessory excretory organs lungs skin no liver intestines about that we discussed yesterday itself other accessory excretory organs other accessory excretory organs right next next excretion in other organ names yesterday we discussed this table protozoa foripara cilentrata platyelminthes nematelminthes anelida arthropoda mollusca cicanodermata protozoan protozoans brownian movement foripara water bathing foripara water bathing platy platy flame cells nematy rennet cells anelida nephridia arthropoda green glands okay malfusion body next molluscus metanephridia echinodermata water vascular then all reptiles aves mammals kidney so this evolution in transport system uh, in excretory system are organs of ex excretory organs in other organisms that table you have to fill okay what are raphides so sixth class students asked you what are raphides excretion so excretory substances stored in the fruits by the plants so those are called raphides waste get stored in fruits okay in the form of solid bodies called raphides inside the fruits the waste stored as a solid so that is called a raphides so herbivores eat raphides kotte kartiki 
Ezra, right. So this Raphaites uh, may be given as a one mark question. That is, uh, choose the correct answer. What are Raphaites? Otherwise, the waste, the waste uh, uh, stored in the fruits as a solid form is known as dash Raphaites. Raphaites. So then you can write about alkaloids in the plants. Okay, phenyl, nicotinin, morphine, cocaine, respirine, caffeine, nimbin, scopolamine, perithroids. Perithroids. These are all alkaloids. This table as is you will get. This table as is you will get. This you may get as a information skill question. You will get the four questions. Read it carefully and write the answers. Otherwise. Quinine, scopolemma, then respirine. So, uh, Ravulfia serpentina, snake root, snake root. The plant recently we discussed about that. Yeah, <clears throat> this is nicotin, nicotinine, nicotine. Nicotina tobacco leaves, so insecticides, painkiller is there now, morphine and cocaine, so this painkiller is very dangerous, okay, clear, sedative, sedative, this word also remember, so scopolamina, datura, stramonium, fruit and flower, Sedative. So this. So central nervous system destroys by the caffeine. Caffeine inside the coffee plants, inside the coffee leaves. Caffeine. So respirine you can remember. Nicotinine you can remember. And scopolamina. So they destroy our. Next. Uh, some more are there. You can write tannin, rexin and uh, gums, latex. Tannins. Cassia, acacia. Leather, leather makes uh, leather shoes, belt, uh, tanning process. Okay, resin occur mostly in gymnospans in specialized passages called res resin passages. So resin pine, var resins, varnishes, uh, uh, tannins, belts, and gum, you know that neem and uh, uh, other plants, we will get the gum. Latex, okay, latex, Jetropa is source for biodiesel, okay, latex, biofertilizers. So these are all uh, some more other excretory things from the plants. So now four chapters completed, okay, here about a brain, so here, uh, <clears throat> who is that a gallon found? about three types of nerves one is sensory nerve and another one is a uh, motor nerve and another one is a mixed nerve sensory are afferent motor are afferent mixed are associated sensory nerve carries stimulation from the affected organ to brain motor broad response from brain to affected organ mixed nerve helps to the sensory nerve and motor nerve draw the structure of nerve means dendrites cell body percaria soma or cytan uh, nasal granules, ma axon, malleated seeds, nodes of runway, nerve terminal. So these are all the parts you have to write in nerve. So what is sensory nerve and what is mixed nerve and what is motor nerve? You can you can sensory nerve uh, some extra nucleus you have to draw motor nerve. Generally you can draw this one. Okay. Water reflex arc. Water reflex arc. So in uh, without our consciousness, whatever the movements occur in our body, that is called a reflex arc. So, for example, uh, your third activity, whatever is there, so that uh, stimulation reaches to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord response occur, that is called a reflex arc. So, spontaneous movements uh, we call as a reflex arc. If you if the bright light fall immediately, the people will glow. So, that is a reflex arc. Like that, and if you keep uh, upon the sharp object or uh, if we keep our food in the fire so immediately we can take it back that information will not uh, 
reaches to our brain these can these type of functions are called a reflex arc so about the brain forebrain midbrain and hindbrain forebrain has a cerebrum cerebellum medulla oblongata three parts are there in the brain so that cerebrum divided into hemispheres two hemispheres and diencephalon so diencephalon is a relay center between the midbrain and the forebrain so here forebrain has a four layers frontal parietal occipital and temporal so two hemispheres uh, right hemisphere acts uh, controls uh, left organs left, uh, left hemisphere controls right organs so here folds are there in the forebrain or cerebrum those folds are called gyri and sulci so in the human beings only more folds are there that helps to more uh, memory so here uh, perception and critical thinking speech hunger anger pain all we can uh, recognize with our forebrain midbrain midbrain only for sight and hearing and hindbrain so medulla oblongata and pons so in the hindbrain uh, cardiovascular activities so sneeze cough heartbeat functions we can uh, this under control of uh, hindbrain so these are the three parts you know very well about it i said very clearly midbrain and the hindbrain you remember that midbrain sight and hearing and brain uh, vasomotor activities respiration and uh, heartbeat so remaining all you can write in the four brain is it clear is it clear next next we are going to discuss about the uh, uh, transfer section of uh, transfer section of uh, spinal cord so sensory dorsal arm dorsal arm spinal canal response okay motor ventral horn affected organ so transverse section of gray matter white matter white matter outside gray matter inside so that structure spinal cord structure page number 103 you can remember that so you can explain about the spinal cord structure spinal cord structure don't forget the that structure motor sensory so from the back side uh, sensory nerves brings stimulation to that that the dorsal horn and ventral horn back side, front side so motor nerves will come out from the ventral horn to the affected organ so like this next uh, this, uh, the function of or what is the role of uh, paul langer hans so paul langer hans function in the kada the story of insulin discovery paul langer han uh, observed some of the special structures on the liver liver or pancreas pancreas so paul langer han discovered some of the special structures on pancreas so he observed uh, the functions of pancreas in uh, what the infrag in dog okay what did he do he remove first uh, pancreas though there is no pancreas but the sugar levels in the blood uh, are reducing so next time he removed the uh, uh, islets of langer hans on the pancreas at that time sugar levels increases more and more no control is there in the sugar level so what happened in these two situations means paul langer hans are located on the pancreas they release insulin into our blood insulin reduces sugar levels in our blood so when uh, paul uh, islets of langer hans are not working so there is no production of insulin into our blood so there is uh, uncontrol of uh, um, sugar levels increasing so that's what that diabetes occurs so this insulin is important to reduce the sugar levels in our blood so this is the discovery of paul langer hans so langer hans find out that special structures on the liver so that's what those are called paul langer hans next feedback mechanism or other chemical coordinators what are other chemical coordinators if you observe uh, cockfight 
so chemical coordinators sometimes you will get angry angry uh, fear brave all these uh, chemical coordinations in our body so cock fight when they are fighting each other so due to adrenaline hormone releasing uh, so we will get the anger and we can fight uh, with the others if we have fear we can far away so maybe you will get the anger or maybe you get a fear so that due to the secretion of adrenaline by the adrenal gland so that is a feedback mechanism so here that uh, angriness may be sometime only we will get uh, that will not carry forward so according to the situation yes fight or flight hormone according to the situation we will get uh, uh, angry or we will get fear so that is certain time only then afterwards that uh, situation comes normal condition so that hormone acts certain time itself afterwards it comes uh, normal condition so that is a chemical reaction feedback mechanism also so feedback mechanism example we can take uh, ghrelin and leptin when we get the uh, when our stomach becomes empty hunger pains uh, start uh, that is a uh, production of ghrelin in our stomach when we eat uh, then automatically leptin releases and uh, ghrelin function reduces so then there is no shouting in our intestine so that is also feedback mechanism so empty stomach uh, can recognize by our uh, uh, brain and uh, it gives uh, indications to uh, gives to indication indications to the glands glands releases uh, hormone so here ghrelin hormone releases by the gland and it uh, makes hunger pains in our stomach so this is the mechanism so here central nervous system peripheral nervous system autonomous nervous system so here before going to discuss about central and peripheral nervous system three systems here name of the gland location and hormone secreted responses of body to hormones so here pituitary gland known as a master gland so pituitary gland releases somatotropin uh, thyrotropin gonadotropin okay then endrico corticotropin hormone luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone so here follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone in male and female already we discussed about that gonadotropin means so this makes uh, ovaries and testes uh, active so first uh, that function will start uh, then uh, due to the these hormones uh, semens also produces in male and female so that is uh, ova formation sperm formation semen formation so this we can see that at the neck thyroid is there okay growth generally ovaries estrogen testes testosterone okay adrenal gland adrenaline so these are all under control of pituitary gland so that's what which we call as a master gland next we are going to discuss about autonomous nervous system central nervous system peripheral nervous system brain and spinal cord central nervous system so some some of the functions under control of our brain so brain and spinal cord working together and uh, uh, some are voluntary functions some are involuntary functions okay with our sense some of functions we will do that without our sense also some functions occur in our body so some functions uh, which occur in our body without our brain involvement those are called autonomous like heartbeat to respiration autonomous um, with the help of autonomous nervous system so brain and spinal cord central nervous system cranial nerves and spinal nerves peripheral nervous system 12 pairs of cranial nerves 31 pairs of spinal nerves total 43 pairs those are called peripheral nervous system 10th vagus nerve makes active all these functions so that is a main major role in female so for respiration okay then here tropic movements so recently that question we discussed about how many types of tropic movements are there so phototropism geotropism hydrotropism chemotropism tigmonastic movement tigmotropism so hydrotropism means to go to the water roots move phototropism means to go to the light plant bend uh, when it is in dark and it bends to go to the light and it grow in that way so geotropism means to go to the soil the roots grow and chemotropism means to receive the nutrients it moves to go to the chemicals 
and the thibonacci movement means mimosa porica attachment of plant in the order so bases are there uh, bottom of the leaf those bases are, are called pelvini so that uh, gets back the water which is sent into the tip of the leaf so the water molecules move back so then the wrinkles occur this movement is called a thigmonastic movement in tachmina plants only we can see that plants also shows stimulate responses to the stimulations means in this plant we can see that then there are five types of hormones are there in the plants so phyto hormones we called it what do we call phyto hormones how many hormones are there in the plants what do we call it explain it there are five hormones are there in the plants which we called as phyto hormones what do we call at the tip growth okay next say uh, fcc acid shedding of leaves delaying the leaf leaves so fresh leaves always on that so especially in winter season and then the seed dormancy also we can see that uh, with the help of the fcc acid cytokinin ripening of fruit cytokinin if we are asked to, to write the main differences between the tropic and gnostic movement what should we write now here write about the tropical movements write about tropical movements in the plant species you have to write five if they ask about thigmonastic movement means only you have to write about base pelvini and the thigmonastic movement how does it occur in the tachmina plant and mimosa podica okay touch me not plant thigmonastic movements tropical movements means five you have to write that is a four marks or six marks question right so write about the phyto hormones five hormones are there fcc acid shedding of leaves seed dormancy delaying the age in the leaves auxins growth at the tips cytokinin and ripen fruit change as ripen by releasing the ethylene okay cell division also is there cell division also is there cytokine and cell division sorry sprouted seeds okay delaying the aging so these are all in the cytokine in itself ethylene ripening of fruit ethylene ripening of fruit gibber lens stem elongation see here ik text book lo ichindan kanta meek simple ga oka order gurtu pettukondi first you write auxins greek word at the tip the growth is more auxins greek word at the tip growth more okay meristematic cells grow younger cells contain auxins growth is more at the tips then second level is a gibberellin uh, so stem elongation occur leaves at the uh, edges so next to gibberellin you can write that stem elongation stem cells uh, divide and stem elongation occur next level oxygen gibberellin next we are going to discuss about uh, cytokinin third one is cytokinin ila order raskonni third one is cytokinin cell division okay promotion uh, promotion of spouting uh, lateral pores delaying age in the leaves uh, stomata opening so here cytokinin means main cell division delaying the age so cell division and more new cells formation occur it it will be constant the age it will not appearing as a old one always it appears as young so that is the delaying age cell division delaying age so with the cell division new cells formation occur and it will be fresh so auxins gibberellins and cytokinin and third one fcc fourth one fcc acid shedding of leaves shedding of leaves and seed dormancy they last old leaves and they get new leaves and seeds also get a germination last one is ethylene ripening of fruit ripening of fruit so in this order you can remember apex auxin terminal growth lateral growth stem growth with the gibberellins then cytokinin cell divisions in stem or in leaf so cell divisions occur cells formation occur younger one younger one delaying the age sprouted seeds formation occur so always those becomes fresh and active with the help of cytokinin 
next we are going to discuss about uh, abscisic acid shedding of leaves they lost their leaves and the seeds seed dormancy so constant uh, uh, seeds without uh, carrying here and there and for so so that growth we can see that and the means seeds germination with the help of the abscisic uh, acid next last one is uh, ethylene ripening of fruits at the at the end that the plants may get uh, fruits and uh, due to the ethylene uh, ripening of fruits occur so auxin gibberellin cytokinin abscisic acid and uh, ethylene so in this way you can remember top lateral delaying cell uh, cell division shedding of leaves seed dormancy last ripening of fruit ethylene so in this order you can write so oka order la vastadi top lo auxins lateral lo gibberellins cell divisions cytokinin shedding of leaves okay abscisic acid then ripening of fruit ethylene so like this in one order you can remember that this is a phyto hormones so five are auxin gibberellin cytokinin abscisic acid ethylene so this is the best way you can fw went experiment is there don't forget fw went experiment is there what is fw went experiment so fw went first they cut the apex of the stem and uh, this they kept in a fluid media without destroying that so he waited some days so here growth is very less because we removed apex in that axins are there here growth is more so lateral in that fluid media this is alive then they kept again they attached to the apex and he observed here growth so that concluded inside the apex axins are more growth is more there that is the fw went experiment at the tip or at the apex more axins are there growth is more at the apex so that's what the we can see terminal parts of the plant younger cells are there fresh leaves are there all one not younger cells agar agar experiment that only no girl agar agar that only yeah so at the at the edges at the edges at the just axins are more growth is more that proved by fw went yes so tendrils about tendrils okay rings formation of tendrils about tendrils also you understood no like aerial roots here tendrils are holding and it is growing so next chapter reproduction chapter is there in this chapter so differences between sexual and asexual no gametes no sex organs no gametes no fusion no formation of zygote directly to get their offspring that is asexual and gametes uh, sex organs gametes fusion of zygote gets offspring is a sexual so sexual asexual two modes are there so here in asexual of fusion binary fusion or multi fusion one split as two binary more than two multi fusion budding upon the east birds formation occur it detach and it can grow as a individual that is a budding next fragmentation so upon the fungal hypospores formation occur they rupture they fall and they can grow as a individual that is called fragmentation parthenogenesis cellular spores formation occur parthenogenesis ovule directly change as a fruit so that's what that is by using the genetical techniques ovule uh, change as a fruit ovule change as a fruit so that's what generally sexual reproduction ovary change as a fruit ovule change as a seed but here by using the technical process okay so ovule directly change as a fruit so that's what there are no seeds that process is called parthenogenesis seedless uh, apple seedless uh, watermelon okay seedless uh, pomegranate nowadays we are going to see even grapes also that is parthenogenesis process 
regeneration regeneration splitting and keeping for example a part of hibiscus plant if we break it and keep in the soil it can grow as regeneration even sugar cane also we can make it as a pieces pieces if we keep in the soil that can grow as a individual plant so so these five uh, methods we can explain as a asexual mode first one is a binary fusion second one is a budding third one is a fragmentation or uh, what we call it here fragmentation or sporulation also we can call it next parthenogenesis and next uh, this one regeneration one of the part we can cut and we can keep that is called a regeneration this is completely about asexual mode of preparation next we are going to discuss about vegetative propagation what is vegetative propagation by the vegetal parts they get their offspring is called vegetative propagation in plants through the leaf through the stem through the root they get their offspring that is also a sexual mode so upon the bryophyllum plant leaf birds formation occur they fall down from the leaf and they can grow as a individual plant so that is called a formation of birds on the leaf epipillus okay they drop off from that leaf and they can grow as a individual plant. so bryophyllum ranapala birds formation at the edge of the leaf epipillus so that birds falls down and they can grow as a individual one so here no sex organs no gametes no fusion no formation of flower but from the leaf they get their bird and they drop off and they can grow as a individual one so this is through the leaf and the stem okay the second one is a stem what is a stem uh, weaker stems if you see that the grass stems they grow on the land that node where they contact they get their roots adventitious roots so they can a scrap on the soil ground if you see the ground in the land grass plants are there and the node they get their roots and they can grow as a individual one though the inter node cut they cut the though they can grow the last one is a root last one is what a root so what are the roots for example uh, ice of potato upon the potato if there is ice if we cut that and if we keep even carrot so with the air if we cut and if we keep inside that they can grow as a individual one so through leaf through stem and through root they get their offspring without fusion of gametes so this is a vegetative propagation this is also a type of asexual reproduction then artificial propagation this is natural and now we are going to discuss about artificial propagation what is artificial propagation so somebody is going to do this activity artificially it is not occurring natural way in the nature so cutting layering grafting so you know that very well about this tree just i am giving uh, cutting means we will cut a piece of stem we can keep somewhere this change as a new plant that is called cutting so here layering i said to you very clearly ground layering and air layering ground layering and uh, air layering so in the in the soil we can keep a branch of plant by removing the peel and we can keep some soil on that and we will water to that where we remove the peel of that stem so there they get that roots if we cut the after getting the roots they can live individually whatever the roots they got the, that uh, adventitious roots we called it that roots are called uh, adventitious roots then air layering means uh, upon the upon the branch we can remove the bark and we can use phytoplankton around the bark and we use pollen cover we can tie it we will uh, make it wet continuously after certain days their root system uh, will form so after getting the roots we will cut the below the root and along with the root and the upper part we can keep in the soil so that is air layering it is contracting in the soil ground layering it is uh, making on the air air layering so ground layering and air layering two types of layering so we can do that so are you there students is it clear ground layering air layering contracting with the soil is a ground layering and in the air we can make a uh, 
a wound uh, means we remove the peel of the branch we can keep phytoplankton around that uh, we will use, use a pollen cover and we can tie so then they will get root system here after that we will cut uh, this we we can keep uh, somewhere both can grow individually so this is ground layering this is air layering so cutting means uh, generally uh, sugar cane or potato roots of uh, means uh, carrot uh, with the air okay so we can keep in the soil directly so that is a cutting here is a layering now we are going to discuss about uh, grafting so why did we use a grafting already i said very clearly so to get the desired characters in a particular plant so some characters we will transfer one plant to another plants by using grafting method approach cleft tongue bird grafting four types i said that here grafting means cyan and stock root stock or stock cyan so the plant which is with the root system that is root stock or uh, stock so the plant part which is we are adding to that that is cyan so for example it is with the root system it is a root stock stock and this is we are going to add this upper one is a cyan so these root stock characters we are sending into the cyan so in this way we are going to do that so in that i said that the approach so like this so by making oh, means we will remove uh, some of the bark uh, until it reaches into the vascular tissue both uh, plants we can remove and we can contacting each other so then this uh, vascular tissue unites after certain days then which plant root system you need and which plants uh, upper portion you need according to that for example this root system is there means here we can cut means this one we can cut and here the upper side of this plant we can remove it. so this is a cyan and this is a root stock like this so it is approach this process is called the approach next we are discussing about the cleft grafting so that stem we are going to make as a v shape so then the upper cyan we are going to make it like this we can insert this is cleft grafting okay approach cleft next tongue grafting like this we can make tongue so upper one make like this so like this we are going to attach okay like this we are going to attach this is tongue type so make the stem root root stock cyan tongue next what last bird grafting bird means we are going to make a t shape and bird we can insert in this so it is bird grafting okay approach cleft tongue okay bird grafting so this four types are root stock cyan root stock cyan so root stock characters we are transferring into cyan that is called that is called what a grafting method desire characters from the root stock to cyan that's it next sporulation spores formation fern leaf is called okay here uh, page number what uh, sporophylls fern leaves are called uh, sporophylls because upon the lower surface uh, surface of the fern leaf spores formation occur that is called uh, sporulation that spores uh, spread all over the areas they can grow as a individual one fern one okay so this is about uh, sporophylls next uh, bread mold experiment uh, Uh, rhizopus grow on that so take one bread mold and uh, sprinkle water drops uh, keep it in polythene cover and keep it in the dark and uh, some water uh, hot temperature after 3 days uh, fungus grow on that bread mold at the end of the fungal ipe uh, round black color ball like structure we can see that uh, in that uh, spores are there that spores rupture and it spread all over the area then fungus can grow that is called rhizopus that we can keep on the slide uh, first take one slide uh, put one or two drops then by using the needle you can keep the block darts here cover with the cover slip and observe under the microscope you are going to see the spores that spores only spread all the surrounding areas 
and it can develop the fungus in our areas. That we can see with the microscope. Here, yeah, don't confuse. Simple ga jab palante bread mold me the farm ayan advanti fungus ball ni needle to this ko ni the slide me the water drops or pete si cover skip dara cover jesi microscope la abzor jayar. So spores we are going to see with the help of the microscope. That spores only spread all over the area to grow the fungus in our houses. Baga booze prasadan de orshal bada tarawata booze ko manila la wasa tachuran de. That is a wet and somewhat hot temperature in dark. Wet and somewhat hot temperature means humidity conditions dark low on the food. Echo Okapoto dark on the one place low. Fungus and other growth on the fungus scientific name. Ikrama rise of a sun to know that rise of us. Next sexual reproduction in the organs male reproductive system, female reproductive system. So puberty in male, puberty in female. So testes next one pair of testes next one pair of uh, seminal ducts prostate gland penis okay urethra so these are the parts you can see that copper gland prostate gland will be here so germinal epithelium produces spams then it goes to vas afferentia epididymis vas differ seminal duct ejaculatory duct um, through the urethra it will come out it will expel out by the copulation it deposit inside the female body so here copper gland helps to produce a, a male sex hormone semen so these are all so testes are located outside of the abdominal um, outside of the body in male below the abdominal cavity testes located in a sac like structure scrotum so this uh, draw the structure of human uh, reproductive system two marks question our picture will give and label it parts otherwise explain human uh, male reproductive system so you can get any type two marks or one uh, one bit or otherwise four marks question next to female reproductive system male reproductive system one four marks or six marks or in that uh, any one question you may get the next is a female reproductive system so if you body after uh, ovaries are uh, developed in the female, then a pair of ovary, oviducts, fallopian, ureter, and vaginum. So once in a once in a month, ovary releases prolifrate secretory phase. Uh, cycle after up to 14 days, prolifrate. So ovary releases with the uh, female sex hormone estrogen. Okay, then the next period is the uh, secretory phase after secretary phase after so that uh, in that phase if there is a, a chance to form zygote then zygote develops and it changes embryo it moves toward to the uterus and it uh, implant in the uterus implantation occur placenta formation occur Yeah, simple. I will tell. Hermaphroditism means bisexual organs. So sexual dimorphism means unisexual organ. So we are unisexual organ, either male or female. But in the other of our androsium and gynosium is there. So both sex organs are there. So that's what that is a hermaphroditism. Hermaphrodite, we called that flower. Hermaphrodite flower, we called it. That method is called hermaphroditism. Is a means method. Okay. Hermaphrodite means the organ which have the both sex organs. Androsium and gynosium is there. Androsium and gynosium. So even earthworm also hermaphrodite because testes and ovary is both in the earthworm itself. In single organ, both sex organs are there. But sexual dimorphism means only one organ, either male or female. Male sex organ or female sex organ. That is the difference between the sexual dimorphism and hermaphroditism. Is it clear? Hermaphroditism means in in any one of the organ, both sex organs are there. That method is called hermaphroditism. That organ is called hermaphrodite. In any organ, if only one sex organ is there, that is a unisexual organ. That method is called sexual dimorphism. Is it clear? Is it clear?
hermaphroditism hermaphroditism both sex organs uh, the organism contain both sex organs that is called hermaphrodite that method is hermaphroditism only one sex you know sex uh, unisexual organ in sexual dimorphism method is a uh, sexual dimorphism right female reproductive system proliferate uh, secretory phase uh, okay one one ova release uh, from one ovary one month and next two ovary release from the next ovary so alternate process if there is a formation of zygote so then uterus fallopian tube ovidex ova vagina becomes strong to bear the baby in the uterus if there is no and it becomes loose and again the next cycle will start that is about female reproductive system male reproductive system contain of a pair of testes seminal ducts prostate gland copper gland penis urethra and female reproductive system contain a pair of ovary ovidex fallopian tube vagina uterus so the, this is the difference between the male and female next what is gestation period or what is pregnancy period nine months duration is called a pregnancy period or gestation period or 282 to 272 to 280 days is called a pregnancy period or gestation period first to three months only all organs formation occur the 12th week of the zygote embryo is called fetus all organs formation occur rest of the six months growth only is there okay after the nine months mother give birth to young one so when the mother gets pain labor pain this total period is called gestation period after give birth mother get a milk from the mammary glands that is called colostrum which is a more immunity so that milk has to give to the baby so this is about gestation period of colostrum don't forget what is colostrum what is colostrum what is colostrum what is colostrum first milk production from the mother after giving birth that is called colostrum okay right so what is implantation embryo attached to the uterus walls is called implantation embryo attached to the uterus walls is called implantation embryo attached to the uterus walls is called implantation what is placenta where uterus uh, where embryo attached to the uterus their swelling occur from that blood vessels and intestine arises so that is placenta so blood vessel and intestines together we called as a umbilical cord so from the placenta to navel of the baby one this blood vessels and intestine connection is there that together called umbilical cord okay next question explain the structure of the throat of liver calyx corella endosium gynosium calyx green color sepals protection corella petals different colors attraction endosium stem and anther together called filament and anther together called stem and so five stamens are there in the anther two lobes are there in the lobes pollen grains are there male sex cells five stamens each stamen contain and anther each anther contain two lobes in that uh, pollen grains are there so those are the male gametes now here the thing is one can move only sperm can move to what to the sperm if zygote formation occur if zygote formation occur that zygos moves to what to the uterus otherwise when that the fallopian tube uterus ovary became strong for fertilization if fertilization not occur then it becomes loose along with that next the cycle it wash out that is the reason so ova cannot move ova cannot move ova cannot motile it cannot move only sperm can move to what to the ovum so in the fallopian tube ova can't move that is the 
reason. So sperm cannot move into the ovary. Sperm cannot move into the ovary. Only one way direction. Ovary released by the ovary to the fallopian tube. That's it. Right. Right. Tomorrow you can ask any doubt. Still. So there is no chance to move ova when it released from the ovary into the fallopian tube. They stay there itself. They stay there itself. Only sperm moves toward to the ovary and fusion occurs. If there is no fusion, in the next cycle, this ova wash out from the body. That's it. Next, uh, Datra flower, four parts, calyx, corella, androsium, gynosium. Androsium means five stamens, filament, anther, lobes, pollen grain together are called. Androsium, mason, male stigma, carpel or fistel or gynosium. Female sex organ, ovary contain ovaries. So these four parts present in the datura flower. Male and female sex organs are there. That's what the datura flower is a hermaphrodite. That method is hermaphroditism. So if androsium or gynosium only one present means that is sexual dimorphism. Male flower or female flower, we can say it. Oval structure and fertilization already I said very clearly. Seven cells with the eight nuclei, three antipodals. Secondary nucleus, one egg and two cynidges. So in the secondary nucleus, two nuclei is there. So when the fertilization occur, so one polar nucleus fused with the egg, first fertilization, zygote formation occur. Second nucleus fused with the secondary nucleus, endosperm nucleus formation occur. So that is completely fertilization and the structure of ovum. So if you know the fertilization, in that only structure of ovum is there. If you know the ovum, we can explain fertilization also. We can draw these pictures. First fertilization result to zygote formation. Second fertilization result to endosperm nucleus formation. Endosperm nucleus provide nutrients to the zygote. Then finally, ova change as seed. O ovary change as a fruit. So all that ovules change as seeds. That fruit formation occur. That's it. Then O means Cellula decellulae. So this uh, all cells they came from the pre-existing cell. All cells. Uh, so Rodolf Virchow, Rodolf Virchow, he who discovered centrioles in ninth class uh, cell structure and functions. So last uh, cell theory law, uh, and Swan. Uh, all cells came from their pre-existing cell and chapter. And functions at the other So when Rodolf Virchow discovered the centrioles. With the help of the centrioles, cell division explained clearly. So, this is a Latin word. Women's decellular. Women's cellular decellular means all the cells they came from their pre existing cell. So, that only explained. So, how the cell division occur means mitotis and meiosis. So, same chromosomes transferred into the mitotic division. Half of the chromosomes transferred in, into offspring in the meiosis first division. Again, the same number of cells transferred meiosis to which is nothing but a mitotic division. So mitotic division occur in somatic or vegetative. Meiosis occur in germ cells are reproductive cells that process. So 133 page XX to XY. So sperm one chromosome and uh, uh, ovum one chromosome transferred into the offspring. So what is the cell formation occur? Thereafter, it becomes double, 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 double. The growth will be there. Cell cycle already said that uh, okay interface uh, s1 phase uh, g phase s2 phase g1 or g2 s phases we discussed it. okay gap one phase so in the replication synthesis so gap two it is ready to divide m phase means so divisions meiosis helps mitosis helps for the growth meiosis helps for a Decide the gender. So meiosis occur in sperm and ovum. So half of the chromosomes transfer. Then whatever the good formation occur, it becomes double, 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 double. The growth appears. So that is gap one, S phase, gap two, and M phase. M phase division completely occur. Gap one replication. Before that interface between the two cells division. Gap one 
replication or duplication synthesis so synthesis is more good okay laga untai okay gap to phase uh, already it, uh, it became double and it is ready to for division ka simple ga cheppali ante elongation chromatids elongation gap one synthesis becoming double gap two it divide already it became double and it is ready to divide and m phase means division starts prophase metaphase anaphase telophase karyokinesis cytokinesis cytoplasm divide nucleus membrane disappear uh, centrioles movements equatorial plate centrioles attached okay anaphase splitting pulling opposite sides telophase reaches nucleus membrane reappear spindle fibers disappear so two nuclei in the single cytoplasm so prophase metaphase anaphase telophase completed karyokinesis cytoplasm is going to divide so cytokinesis completed cell division completed <coughs> birth control mores is different okay then how to prevent the sexual contract diseases so in that uh, recently i explained about that the birth control mores to prevent the birth rate but uh, uh, diseases uh, it is different uh, so for that uh, whatever the ideas i explained uh, once you read uh, i no need to explain here that's what i am not uh, explaining about that okay birth control mode uh, kapati or uh, vasectomy tubectomy whatever we recently we discussed uh, that you remember but diseases are different from the birth control modes that i am going to uh, mention here that i am going to explain aids is caused by hiv virus human immuno virus okay acquired immuno deficiency syndrome that is aids definitions you should not forget okay right in tamil nadu first time and uh, uh, at that time africa from the africa it spread okay aids next krilin uh, leptin in uh, coordination so there is a coordination hunger pants increases due to krilin hunger pants reduces due to leptin so why the krilin releases and why the leptin releases that you know that so different activities are there if you have the severe cold why you can't find the smell and taste means chemo receptors are attached to the taste buds and the mucus so if there is a severe cold you can't find out the taste you can't find out the smell and the food so there is a interrelation between that so for that we may different act as supported of apple piece potato piece soap okay cumin ingo whatever the activity is there that you can clearly explain once you taste it by looking by without looking also wash your tongue and taste it so what is the role of palate and saliva also there only we can find out that if you keep crystals of sugar here without touching the palate that will not dissolve in the saliva when you press it the saliva produces on your tongue then the dissolve and chemo receptors transfer to your brain you can recognize that so that so saliva in the saliva it has to dissolve so your chemo receptors which are connected to your nose and tongue it should be work in the proper manner then only you can know the smell and taste of the food immediately otherwise it will not work all this activity is related to that only smell or taste at a time we are going to recognize with our brain so if you have severe cold you cannot find out yeah reverse peristalsis means uh, if any hazardous or harmful substances present uh, in the food uh, so to avoid uh, different uh, types of diseases or to avoid uh, um, whatever the metabolic activity it is going to destroy with that food uh, so it will send out uh, by vomiting when it comes outside uh, vomiting occurs that is reverse peristalsis why reverse peristalsis occur means if you take stale food or if you take poisonous food it will come out as a vomiting so that at that condition reverse peristalsis occur 
so when vomiting occur something that food is not digested in that food some microbes are there which makes harm to you so to prevent it the stomach shows the reverse peristalsis it will send out by the vomiting okay structure of teeth dental formula incisors canines premolar molar 1 by 2 by 2 1 by 1 2 by 2 3 by 3 you can write about four types of teeth name incisors can premolar molar incisor canine premolar molar so 2 by 2 1 by 1 2 by 2 3 by 3 you can write that okay palate tongue between what happens when you crush the food means so when you press the food between the tongue and palate salivary glands release saliva then you are going to find the taste with your nose with your tongue smell and taste with, with the help of chemoreceptors clear then potato and cycle tube experiment how do you prove that okay uh, peristalsis movement occur bolus in our esophagus that you know that how much saliva produces a day means 1.5 liters saliva produced in our mouth saliva acidic in basic nature means first acid then it changes into basic nature this all activities then propulsion grinding retropulsion in the stomach what happens that pitches sometimes you will get so what does it indicate means grinding food in our stomach you can explain that what is propulsion what is grinding and what is retropulsion so that you want to explain a stomach is uh, what is given here stomach the mixture and the digester means how it digest means so in our stomach hydrochloric acid and uh, it acts on uh, proteins and it changes peptides how the hydrochloric acid releases and uh, how the mucus function occur that you want to explain in this esophagus function with the potato and the cycle tube and oil you can explain that then how the microvilli absorbs the food particles digested substances absorbed by the microvilli microvilli richly supplied with the blood vessels that digested substances means glucose absorbed by the microvilli and it uh, transferred into the blood and it reaches to all the cells along with the uh, transportation uh, third step transportation uh, fourth step uh, exchanges uh, gas uh, exchanges gases at the tissue level what are the four step is there in steps in respiration what is the double circuit circulation is there this together transportation in the blood oxygen and in the blood glucose and minerals are all transported to the each and every cell of our body okay last expulsion of waste excretion so already i said to you so fecal defecation process just a minute fecal defecation jositara dosigo kada konesu so fecal defecation uh, anus at the anus two splinters are there inner splinter is involuntary outer splinter is a voluntary when uh, fecals are more in our so it makes uh, uh, uncomfort it has to remove from our body with our sense so that is a defecation process uh, at the anus so two splinters are there outer splinter is voluntary inner splinter is involuntary so with our sense we de- we remove fecals from our body that is a defecation what do we call that is a defecation most dangerous substance ammonia fecal contain ammonia what is stool ane word kuda ostadi don't forget what is stool so ammonia fecal is called stool the yellow color what is that that is in yellow color stool don't forget fecal is called stool what do we call fecal is called stool don't forget right next next seventh also completed eighth chapter heredity in this what is heredity what is inheritance and what is uh, um what words are there 
heredity inheritance so heredity means random changes uh, from parent to offspring is called heredity inheritance same characters will transferred next next is called inheritance so mendel gregor johan mendel is a father of genetics okay yeah phases is called stool so in that the most content is ammonia phases is in yeah coming to petasium i coming to the webbed feet the skin in the feeds of duck and eagle wings that is called petasium skin is there that is called petasium okay 10000 plants 4000 34 varieties seven characters so heredity so flower location flower color seed color seed shape pod color pod shape and long or short plants the seven characters observed in pea plant why is chosen means annual plant bisexual plant throughout the world anywhere it can grow these are the desirable characters to choose that plant he made his experiment in in his church garden okay he is a monk whatever this process is there so what is larva segregation only one character transferred into the offspring is called larva segregation mono hybridization okay all tall plants 75 tall 25 uh, uh, yellow are short uh, yellow are green are tall are short whatever the characters only one character okay so at the end a uh, bad wing and webbed feet in the ducks okay uh, phenotype is 3 is to 1 genotype is 1 is 2 is to 1 so half segregation this is only one characters will transfer is will the skin between is the skin between not will is will at a time draw is yeah lisa 67 log thank you for coming thank you very much this is my revision for the students thank you for coming thank you please give me like and please watch my harang thank you thank you right web bird feed the wings wings madhya lo gaani coming coming wings madhya lo gaani fingers madhya lo gaani skin unte danni petasium antam duck ki duck duck in the duck feet skin is there okay in wings of the birds skin is there. that is called petasium right here larva independent assortment means dihybridization larva segregation means only one character dihybridization means two characters i said very clearly the recently the day before yesterday once you remember that uh the characteristics contain a pair of ll or a pair of factors oka character lo rendu ll gaani ledha rendu factors gaane untayi adhe manam tt r capital t capital t r small t small t la isukunnam indulo edo okati maatrame offspring ki transfer avuthe progeny means offspring so one from father and one from mother only one trait or factor transferred to the offspring that is law of segregation in that one is dominant and one is recessive so ikkada manam green yellow chusukundam green dominant a yellow dominant a you can write whatever it is yellow dominant a green recessive one anam so one character appearing outside and another is a recessive so law of dominance among the two characters one transferred from father one transfer from the mother into the offspring but uh, one from father one from mother in that offspring but father character or mother character only one dominant another one is a recessive so what is dominant that is a dominant law of dominance so what is law of independent assortment means here only color we observe their color and the shape two characters will transfer that is law of independent assortment double characters two characters transferred to the offspring okay so law of segregation means only one character from parent to progeny 
law of independent assignment means two characters from parent to progeny more than one character yes law of segregation only one character law of independent means more than one character okay so that uh, you know very well how to write that three is to nine is to three is to three is to one that table 16 one shot to one lang one shot to one lang you can take like that uh. so yellow round yellow wrinkle green round green wrinkle two two characters will be in that box finally nine is three is three is one yellow round three green round three yellow wrinkle one green wrinkle that we are going to find in that the law of independent assortment dihybridization write about the dna two marks question double helix structure watson crick discovered watson crick discovered 1953 so guanine adenine cytosine thiamine these are the staircases we can see in dna guanine cytosine thiamine adenine due to this combination new characters will form these are called bases or staircases due to combination of guanine thiamine thia, what is that guanine adenine cytosine and thiamine this combination helps to form the new characters if new characters occur that is heredity if the same character sorry uh, heredity if the same characters occur that is inheritance that we are going to find in this variations or mutation we can call it so next topic who decide the gender of the baby who decide the gender of the baby father decide the gender of the baby xx xy xx female xy male so this is father decide the gender of the baby so 20 chromosomes are there 23 chromosomes are there 22 are autosomes 23rd is a halosome 23rd is a halosome homozygous heterozygous so homozygous means same pure heterozygous means mixed characters so homologous analogous homozygous heterozygous so homologous divergent and was convergent so there is a variation is there so don't forget the don't write jagus is different from homologous organ analogous organ homozygous is a chromatids and genes homologous organ means structurally same functionally different divergent functionally same structurally different analogous convergent so that you know very well about that so charles darwin what is natural selection galapagos island pinch birds big structure charles darwin then beetles color why it changes natural selection occur lamarck is a giraffe neck extended according to their food mode so that is acquired characters august weisman said that physical changes will not transfer to the next generation only genetical changes will transfer to the next generation malthas theory charles lyell theory principle of geology geometrical and arithmetical so that you can you can remember that then so till now i didn't recall this question what is macro evolution and what is micro evolution small changes in a group is called macro evolution uh, random and more changes is called micro evolution macro evolution micro evolution macro micro only little changes more changes means micro evolution okay macro micro macro micro macro micro evidence of embryo at the beginning all embryos are look like same bex what are bex yagamaya what is your doubt macro evolution micro evolution macro evolution micro evolution don't forget fossil vl the study of fossils is known as paleontology by using the carbon dating method we will know the age of the fossil fuels 
so bone so skull of the dead bodies so if we get those are called fossil fuels from that we will find the age by using a carbon dating beaks okay 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 he wrote becks evidence of fossils so skull you can what are archaeoptics what are archaeoptics what are archaeoptics so it uh, it is crawl on the land like a reptiles and it can fly like a birds uh, like a birds between the means both characters are there both characters are there they can crawl and they can fly those, those are archaeoptics interlink between the aves and the reptiles aves and the reptiles human evolution human evolution so you know that human evolution apithecus stalopithecus okay homo habilis homo erectus homo neanderthalensis okay homo sapiens now our structure is homo sapiens they can crawl and they can fly yes homo sapiens so these seven you can write in order you can write about their uh, dates 1.5 to 1.8 1.2 okay 1.6 to 1.2.5 millions whatever theirs are there so first early man born in africa from africa onwards the humans has spread throughout the world throughout the world so that is about human evolution the last question in this chapter what are vestigial organs okay what is atavism okay what is atavism so useless organs in our body are known as like appendix ear pin ear nail these are called useless organs so those are called vestigial organs 180 organs are there in our body so we can move with that useless organs so that's what we call it vestigial organs hi adi hi vestigial organs okay our body is a moving museum atavism don't forget what is atavism means with that 180 organs we are moving so, so our body is a moving museum of vestigial organs this is called atavism we are moving the useless organs with this 180 organs we are moving our body is a moving museum of vestigial organs so this condition is called atavism don't forget moving museum moving museum moving museum atavism okay pyramid of number pyramid of energy and pyramid of biomass so in an ecosystem producers consumers decomposers are there these are called tropical levels pyramid of number pyramid of biomass pyramid of energy so number decreases biomass decreases energy decreases biomass increases in aquatic organisms so producers more consumers less secondary consumers less tertiary consumers less so when the number decreasing then biomass also transferring uh, from the bottom to top decreasing then automatically energy also going to decrease so if you see this uh, in aquatic uh, it quite reverse biomass increases so cone is reverse like this you want to write uh, in uh, aquatic organism but number biomass energy decreases in terrestrial organisms so this symbol you can remember that uh, except uh, aquatic organisms like this remaining number decrease biomass decrease energy decreases okay what is food chain what is niche what is food web interlink between the food chains is called food web what is niche means the location of the organism in the food chain either it is in producer level or consumer level or decomposer level so this is the location of the organism in the food chain is called niche the location of the organism in the food chain is called niche okay so charles elden an ecosystem compared with us 1927 charles elton 1927 charles elton remember position of the organism in the position of the organism in the food chain 
is called niche producer consumer or decomposer biomass decreases in terrestrial biomass increases in aquatic so number decreases in terrestrial biomass decreases terrestrial energy also decreases in terrestrial collier lake operation 193 countries so more than number of 2000 lakhs estimated 20 lakhs of birds reaches to every year due to uh, due to application okay adi thank you thank you so uh, all this issues by the local people occupation means they occupied that uh, and uh, change as a uh, fishery agriculture so pollution occur more birds lost there so operation collier m e f o okay what is that m e f o what did you write ministry of environment and forestry department they started operation collier and they recover nutrification the word here given phytoplankton more growth in the water so lower organs will not get uh, air and water no photosynthesis aquatic plants no oxygen for the aquatic organs they will die they decompose and they release bad smell so growth of phytoplankton in the water due to urea that is called urea so apply in our field to grow plants more and more so that uh, they, whatever the urea they did minister of environment and forest yes so that they applied in that aquaculture so that urea reaches into this water body then automatically the fields uh, filled with that urea that entered into that uh, water body the fishes will die the birds will not come the total lake the total lake is collapsed okay total lakes collapse so due to this generally what happened that recovers and uh, the collier lake protected by the central government so here bo and dod about uh, biological um, biologically oxygen demand bod do means dissolved oxygen about that we discussed already anthropogenesis means these chemicals entered into the um, water body due to the chemical yeah due to the chemicals eutrophication occur due to that eutrophication so all it is going to spoil so eutrophication toxic contaminated so here bio is and bio also in this only we are going to explain what is bio accumulation and what is bio magnification means these pollutants entered into the food chain either at a, um, producer level or primary consumer or secondary consumer or whatever it is in at what tropical level these pollutants entered into the food chain that is a bio accumulation that transferred into next 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 level that is bio magnification why about this we are going to discuss means uh, like uh, uh, hyderabad reservoir minimata disease and asthma cadmium uh, due to the cadmium uh, bronchitis diseases are coming what is the reason so in that water these chemicals are at, uh, released that chemicals are uh, entered into the uh, phytoplankton plants at that plants this means the produce level this chemical center that plants eaten by the um, fishes fishes eaten by the human beings so that's what the, the cadmium entered into the human body and it which makes bronchitis asthma like respiratory disease so one tropical level to another tropical level if the pollutants transfer that is magnification where that uh, pollutants entered into the food chain at the first time that is bio accumulation so at the plant level it entered there bio accumulation occur from the plants to fishes magnification fishes to human being magnification then due to the transferring of these chemicals from the ground to water water to plant to plant to fish to fish to human body so we are going to get a bronchitis or diseases so this is the way we are going to cover with the bronchitis and okay sparrow campanian that you know very well 
so sparrows are eating only insects which attack the field but that uh, king gave a order due to uh, sparrows our grains are going to decrease so that's what you kill so so that uh, king's order they obeyed and they destroyed almost all uh, sparrows after certain days one of the scientist who made experiment sparrow digestive system in that uh, only insects are there grains are very less so then they realize uh, due to sparrows our grains are not decreasing so we made a big mistake already so the damage uh, happened later they didn't kill any sparrow then later the sparrow number slowly increases that is about sparrow campaign so steps in uh, steps to go to the prevention so crop rotation method changing the crops to regain the nutrients in the soil for the next crop so this time rice or bajra or whatever like that we are going to crop rotation method yeah china next study the life histories of the pest so what pest is there in our field so how, how they are being how can we destroy them that we have to know the name of the pest how they can develop the number and how can we reduce their number know about the, the lifestyle of pest biological controls means food change you have to allow in our field without using the chemicals so first is a crop rotation method next study of the pest life cycle third one is a biological controls by using the food chains next sterility sterility this is important sterility means reduce their population by reproduction so for example in our house mosquitoes are there so we have to reduce their mosquito reduce that mosquito by using the mosquito bars or repellents or whatever it is we have to reduce otherwise so we cannot reduce all mosquitoes but they lay eggs in the drainages no that drainages drained water by pouring uh, chemical and by uh, keeping some flame due to the heat that eggs are going to destroy so strains we are going to destroy so that is reproductive ability destroy environmental ethics so, so everybody should have should have responsibility on our environment that is environment so we should not throw plastic in the field we should not destroy the environment natural resources any any way by adding chemicals or uh, whatever the way then that we should have some moral ethics to protect our natural resources so that is environmental ethics these are the steps to prevent the prevention so this is about ninth chapter and last chapter what are percolation tanks so by using the mud rocks the silt so the flow of water we can store in a particular area to draw the ground water so those are called percolation tanks how can we construct means 70% above we are going to construct that percolation tanks 75 water will be stored in that so remaining water we can send out so continuously water will reach so 25 flow out 75 will be stored in that place itself those are called percolation tanks which helps to develop the ground water that the water we can use to plantation for agriculture for drinking daily usages so about vadicharla vanaparthi so what is the situation happened at there so percolation tanks help for the vadicharla uh, vanaparthi okay vadicharla it's not happened like that small scale large scale what is the uh, ratios are there that this 10th chapter completely about the uh, information skill saturations only is there so drip irrigation where the water scarcity is there very less amount of water is there there what we want to do what precautions will you take ikka nunchi kuda different questions vastai so if there is a less amount of water how can you cultivate are the under dry land crops we have to use there okay so drip irrigation method furrow irrigation broad base irrigation these are the irrigation methods we have to use and uh, only dry land crops are that pond under telugu lo so takku water ni use crops matrame use cheyale so water for all water is too little to waste one chapter is there in 7th 
3 percentage only water is there, 90 percentage water, uh, that is a marine water. In that 3 percentage, 1 percentage only drinking water, remaining snow and glaciers are there. So that water we have to use in, it in the proper manner, recharge it after using, that is. Okay, study of Kottapalli. Okay, Vinesh, about that you can read. In page number 218, Sriram Sagar Dam, contour. Okay, the flow of water we have to stop with that contour construction step by step. So here, Ikrisat is there. International Scrap Research Institute for semi arid tropics. So they are going to make new hybrid varieties of seeds that seeds can use less amount of water, less duration less nutrients and more products they can give within the short span of the time. So that is a function of ICRISAT. It is located in Patancharu near Hyderabad. It is to uh, Medal district previous. Now it is belongs to Sangareti. It is belongs to Sangareti. Agree. Uh, Liricidia trees. Yes. So that develops the soil fertility and thus that develops the water content in the ground. So these plants we are using for a green manure. Okay, that leaves uh, are going to decompose and that develops the soil fertility. Less number of water they are using within the short span of the time. Okay, in this two marks question, very very important question. If it is given as a two marks question, in this what is sustainable development? Consume and conserve. It should be coexistent. Is sustainable development sustainable development consume and conserve it should be coexistent use and save so that is consume and conserve so co it should occur coexistent that is called sustainable development and a constant wealth on the manami water water mana mundu mana parents a water water mana tarawada next generation a water water are they same equal amount of poop waters same equal amount of natural resources has to utilize what we got from our forefathers as this we have to give to the next generation that is consume and conserve that is a sustainable development there is a symbol also is there in triple two so what does it indicate and what is sustainable development so that question answer you want to write it it will give as a two marks no doubt if it comes it comes as a two marks remember triple two page okay renewable non-renewable so which are uh, uh, which we will get uh, as soon as from the nature those are called renewable which we will not get as soon as it will take thousands of years that is called non-renewable coal petrol uh, uh, diesel, crude oils we will get uh, uh, it will take thousands of years those are non-renewable and uh, air sunlight these are renewable frequently we will get uh, so that is renewable and non-renewable so Biodiesel from the jet probe of plant seeds. Biodiesel. Biodiesel. From the jet probe of plant seeds, we will get. Plant name is jet probe. In the order, from the seeds, we are going to get a diesel. That is biodiesel. From the plants, we are getting. So that's what which we call as biodiesel from the plants. Okay. MMT, mountain top removal minings so dust particles to reduce minerals okay mmt next to four hours formula reduce reuse recycle recovery four hours formula reduce reuse recycle recover so this four hours you can read with a, your own example or you can read with the textbook reduce reuse recycle recovery so this is the total nutrition, respiration, transportation, excretion, coordination, reproduction, coordination and life process, heredity, our environment, natural resources. The total 10, 10 chapters, uh, almost all questions I explained. Still any doubt is there. Tomorrow you can ask me in the... Okay, so still any doubt is there. Uh, note down right now itself and get ready with that uh, questions tomorrow we can continue with that uh, questions itself so eight nine ten chapters frequently you can read uh, all activities from the first three you can read uh, 
ఓకే సిక్స్ సెవెన్ ఓకే డిస్క్రైబ్ ద స్ట్రక్చర్ ఆఫ్ మెయిల్ ఫిమేల్ ఓకే దత్తర ఫ్లవర్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ బిట్వీన్ ఆర్డరీస్ వెయిన్స్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ బిట్వీన్ డెస్పిరేషన్ అండ్ పర్సన్స్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ బిట్వీన్ ఎరోబిక్ అండ్ ఎనరోబిక్ సో ఆల్ దిస్ ఆల్ దిస్ వన్ డిస్క్రైబ్ ద స్ట్రక్చర్ ఆఫ్ వన్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ బిట్వీన్ వన్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ స్కిల్ అప్లికేషన్ త్రూ మోడల్ రైటింగ్ so write some slogans on environment what precautions will you give so like that some questions what suggestions will you give so don't forget every everywhere so last chapters environment meda meer konni own slogans questions raskondi okay so up to now 3 hours 15 minutes completed okay so good good uh, those who picked up i think uh, i tried my level best to give almost all content in the 10 chapters still any doubt is there tomorrow is there tomorrow you can ask okay okay it's okay rabana it's my responsibility i try my level best to, i give so be patient see and uh, read question thoroughly you can understand so don't confuse question ardham cheskondi question a question daniki a answer raayalanadi presentation neat ga raayandi okay right all the best we'll meet tomorrow in the class <laughs> congratulations in advance for 2k family sir okay i'm uh, going to get a 2k uh, doing some lives i uh, will do of course also you know sixth class yeah i'm gonna say okay ఓకే ఓకే జరా ఓకే రైట్ రైట్ ఓకే ఎనీవే సో యూస్ దిస్ ప్రాపర్ టైమ్ డోంట్ వేస్ ద టైమ్ టేక్ కేర్ అబౌట్ యువర్ హెల్త్ ఓకే స్లీప్ సూన్ గెట్ రెడీ ఫర్ టుమారో రైట్ ఓకే గుడ్ నైట్ గుడ్ నైట్ టు ఆల్